Martin Stadium in the frigid Palouse. It's time for Apple Cup 96 as the Washington Huskies visit the Washington State Cougars. Hello, everyone. I'm Bud Namick, along with former Cougar quarterback Cleet Casper and former Husky quarterback Sonny Sixkiller. We're going to have a lot of fun today as the Cougs and the Dogs get together in the Apple Cup. You just saw the coin toss. The Cougars will have the football first. And Cleet Casper, that means Ryan Leaf and company will have their first crack at the Husky defense. I think that uh, Ryan and guys want to get out right away and try to get some points on the board. Let's see if we can kick this crowd up into a bigger frenzy than they're already <laughs> at. Sonny, I don't know. What do you think? Well, I tell you, they've been here. The, the students got in about two hours ago, so you know they're all ready for this ball game. And you're right. It's a chance that in the pregame we talked about it. Jason Chorak and the Husky defense getting after Ryan Leaf and see if they can get some pressure on him. Well, there was talk that the weather would perhaps hold the crowd down a little bit as you see Mike Price on the Cougar sidelines his eighth year as the head coach of the Cougars but a pretty good crowd here a lot of folks in eastern Washington still without power due to the ice storm earlier in the week and some folks decided to come down and take refuge in the cold in the stadium but nothing better than getting together with a fellow football fan and enjoying a little rivalry. Cleet and I were down in the field before the game and the bands are playing the players are warming up they're popping helmets and pads and I turned to Cleet and said I don't think I could imagine myself being out in that field. No, they're just too dang big. <laughs> <laughs> There's Ryan Leaf. He came out of the tunnel to warm up before the team, as he usually does. And Ryan came out, went to midfield, stood on the Cougar logo, just held his hands up to soak in the crowd. And they had a roar. It was interesting. Sean McWashington came out, grabbed one of the flags from a member of the rally squad, paraded around. These guys are fired up. And the Huskies trying to protect their cut. Holmes, trying to continue their winning streak while the Cougs will try to break a losing streak. But gentlemen, we throw all that out once it's time for the Apple Cup. Absolutely irrelevant out there right now that these two teams are as keyed up as you can get. This crowd is right on top of you here at Martin Stadium. You don't have the track that goes around it like you do down at uh, Huskyville. And the, the, the fans are really into it, and you can see there, it's dropping. And yeah. by the time halftime rolls around, they're predicting snow. So far, though, pretty good playing conditions, actually. The, the field's wet, but you still have pretty good traction out there. There you see the Palouse weather. A little bit of wind, not much humidity yet. Possible snow is what the Cougs are hoping for to light this team up. Huskies lead this series. The home team has won five in a row, and the Cougars have won four of seven since the game was moved back here to Pullman after they played in Spokane for quite a while. Jim Lambright, head coach of the Huskies. He's 2-1 and one against the Cougars in this his fourth year. John Wales will boot it away. The Cougars will have Dee Morincola and Kevin McKenzie deep. As you see Mike Price's record here at Washington State. He would love to get an Apple Cup victory here. He has not been feeling very well this week. He's got he a real raspy right voice. <laughs> He's been bothered by what doctors have told him could be the walking pneumonia or the croup. It's not a good sign, but he's ready for this one. You play with pain in the Apple Cup. And we're ready to go. It's Morin Cole on the bottom of your screen. McKenzie at the top, and Apple Cup 96 is underway. It'll be more in Cola, and it will be down. It'll be the Cougar ball at the 20. No, he's going to bring it out. And he's got a little room in the middle. More in Cola out to the 33 yard line. How about that? Well, a, a tough one for the Husky players because the official is in the end zone ruling that it's a, a touchback. But Morin Cola likes to bring it out after everybody had pretty much stopped on the official signal. Ryan Leaf will have great operating room starting uh, outside the 32-yard line, almost to the 33. Hey, Cleet, all year they've been doing the pooch kick the Huskies have. It's kind of unusual that they would kick it deep and have a possible return. Morin Cola did a great job. Leaf has completed 53% of his passes on the air. He's thrown a few interceptions of late. He'd like to turn that around today. They'll give it to Michael Black, and he won't go much of anywhere against that tough Husky front line. Let's take a look at the Cougars' starting offensive lineup with Ryan Leaf, the man at the controls. 
Michael Black in the backfield. Timms and Carpenter, McWashington in the wideouts. Knuff, eight catches against Stanford a week ago from his tight end position. Scott Sanderson anchoring the offensive line. Jason McAdoo, Corey Withrow, Brian Shue playing with the injured shoulder. Ryan McShane on the right side. We'll set the Husky defense following a second down and 10. Double tight end for the Cougars. Huskies dance around, show blitz. Leaf changing the play with five on the play clock. He'll hand it to Black. He'll try to bounce it outside. And he's able to pick up about five yards on the play and a good effort by Michael Black. For the Huskies defensively, Chris Campbell, Dave Ritchie, Mac Tuiae on that front line. Tuiae, the freshman, 285 pounds. Jason Chorak leads the Pac-10 in sacks. Aliaga and Fiala, outstanding linebackers, and Jerry Jensen on the weak side. The corners are freshmen, but they have played well for the Huskies. Call it a gain of four for Black. It'll be third and six for the Cougars from the 37. Black out of the backfield as the Cougars will go with the five wide receiver set. Short drop, Leaf Knuff can't hang on. Jensen with the defense against David Knuff, and the Cougars will have to punt it away. And Cleet, that's been a problem for the Cougars all year. They've not done a good job of converting third downs. Well, it looked like Ryan might have hurried that a little bit. Nice close by Jensen, though, and to strip the ball away. David Knuff had an excellent effort last week against Stanford, unable to hold on to that one. So Banks will come on, and uh, the Huskies do what they want to do. Stop the Cougars three and out. Banks to boot it away. He's averaging 43 yards a kick. He's had three blocked this year. Dave Janoski is deep for the Huskies. Banks gets the kick away, and it's a good one. A hanging spiral, and Janoski makes the catch and will go nowhere. Chris Jackson with the coverage for Washington State. So the Cougars unable to move the ball, and now Sunday six killer. I imagine we'll see a little bit of number four. Well, you got Brock Hewer talking to coaches right there. Bill Dietrich, the uh, quarterback coach, He's saying, Brock, here's what we're going to do. Number four in the backfield is going to get the ball. Corey Dillon's had a great year. And actually, stepping in, he wasn't the starter to begin with, Bud and Cleet. Rashawn Sheehy last year running for over 200 yards in the Apple Cup. No fullback. Dillon will be the lone setback as the Huskies go to the three tight end look. Brigham is in. Kissel is the H-back to go with Cam Cleland. Here comes Mr. Dillon. He picks up about five, maybe six, on that first down carry. Corey Dillon having an amazing year. George Giao will be the fullback when he is in. Cleland, the number one tight end. Pathan and Janoski on the outside. The offensive line has done a nice job fighting through injuries. Bob Sapp, the senior, on the weak guard spot. We'll set the Cougar defense in a moment. Gain of six for Dillon. It's second and four from the 27. Washington State coming up with Stewart almost in a linebacker position with an eight-man front. Obviously, two tight ends for the Huskies. Here's Dillon, tries the outside, breaks away, gets a good block, and he's run out of bounds, but it's a Husky. First down, they'll spot it at the 37, gain of 10. Take a look now at the Cougar defense. Holmes and Bender, tough inside, but because of injuries, they'd have to play an awful lot this past season. They've gotten worn down a bit. Doyle and Boos on the outside. Moore, Darling and Nansen. Darling and Nansen, seniors playing in their final game in Martin Stadium. Chad Hinchin, the senior. Dwayne Stewart, Derek Henderson, D. Moore, and Cola in the backfield. First down, Huskies at the 37 after the 10-yard gain by Dillon. That's Janoski in motion. Cougars jump, and we have a flag. Heward throws to Janoski, who wasn't looking for it. Since the officials let the play go, it was a free play offside against Washington State. The Huskies certainly will take the penalty. Washington State, the most penalized team in the Pac-10 conference. Gordon well, Reese is our referee today. Well, Dave Janoski learned something on that one. Keep doing the play and don't let up. I tell you, Shad Henshin came up and leveled him. Yeah, you got to play to the whistle. And yeah. then, about, then about three more steps in this game. Yes. Good look at Brock Hewitt. Has himself had a very good year. His role has been somewhat diminished as the offense for the, the Huskies. Scott Linehan electing to hand the ball off number four. And so far, I think it'd be a, safe to say that that's been a successful 
direction this year. Protect Hewitt a little bit. Don't make him win the games. Do it with the ground game. George Keao, the fullback, is in the lineup for the first time as Fred Coleman goes in motion. Play fake. Hewitt has time to throw. Steps up, throws it up for Dillon, and it is incomplete. Dillon almost made a heck of a catch. I'm not sure he'd have been an eligible receiver. I thought he'd come from out of bounds. Very close. They will throw the ball to him, guys, and uh, Corey Dillon, as he proved last week, can take it the distance. Got very good hands out of the backfield. Almost a heck of a play. Nope, showing uh, acceleration down that sidelines, and when Bud was saying uh, incomplete, as you can see, he is out of bounds here. Nansen is covering him, number four on four, but it looked like that ball was way overthrown, and he hit the Jets and almost got <laughs> yeah, it. He did. Second and five after the offside penalty. The Huskies had a chance to gamble on that. Dillon leaves. Jason Harris, the lone setback. He'll get the football, and the offensive line pushes forward for a gain of about three. It's going to be third and about a yard and a half for the Huskies. So big test here is there some of the dog fans who made the trip over. Jason Harris came in last week, and actually the last three or four ball games is running the ball real well for the Huskies. You'd like to have Corey Dillon in there on every play, but it's nice to have second and third teamers, as you know, that come in and spell you a little bit. While the Cougars have struggled on third down, as you can see, the Huskies have not. Dogs have been outstanding on third down, almost 50%. That's amazing. A little surprise that Corey Dillon is back in. Still Harris in the backfield. Harris has got the first down as a very late flag comes in. The Cougars might have been offside, but if they were, and that's the flag, that's a delay a game penalty on the official for taking so long to throw the flag. It's hard to grab the flag with all those gloves on, bud. <laughs> those guys are trying to keep warm down there. It is offside, so either way, it's a first down for the dogs. And the football will move into Cougar territory. Mike Price accepting another verdict against the Cougs. Just unexplainable how all season long that that's Offside. been the problem. Defense, five yards from the previous spot. The yardage gives Washington a first down. Washington State has that attacking pressure type defense where you got to get off quickly and use the, the quickness of Booz and Bender. So far today, though, that last first down is really due to penalties. There you see Corey Dillon back in the backfield, lines up about five yards behind the line of scrimmage as Coleman comes in motion. Dillon straight ahead. He's met by a crimson wall, and there's nothing for Corey Dillon this time. Johnny Nansen pretty fired up. James Darling bouncing around. Cooks had that one sniffed out pretty well as James Darling is going to come up. He's going to inch up right into the hole. We talked about it a little bit that he wants to get to that hole before those offensive linemen for the Huskies can get a piece of him, even if you don't get a hole shot. Those linemen want to at least scream James Darling off, leading tackler in the Pac-10. Brad Lawson in a place of... Leon Bender on the defensive line for the Cougs right now on second and 10. Lawson was in on that last play as well. Dillon, a little more running room, and that time he wins the collision as his momentum pushes James Darling for a couple of yards. <laughs> That's going to be a battle all day. I mean, they're jawing on each other a little bit. Corey Dillon doesn't say a lot. He doesn't talk trash out there. He just kind of does his job. People ask him, how did it go out there today? I was just doing my job, and that was a nice collision. Well, third and two. And you can guess where the Huskies are going here, unless they decide to have some fun and go play action and try to throw it into the end zone. They have trips to the left, so the threat is there. And what that does is forces the Cougars to spread things out. Might give Dillon a little more room up the middle. Now he'll go in motion out of the backfield. Heward, they set up the screen to the tight end. Cleland has it, has a first down. And he'll be inside the Cougar 30. Well-designed play by the Huskies. Excellent little wrinkle. Scott Linehan up here in the booth decides we're going to make Corey Dillon the focus and spread him out and then throw the tight end screen in behind the area that he vacates. So a nice little wrinkle that the Huskies throw, a nice safe pass on a cold afternoon too. So he used to like to dump those ones off, throw it for five yards and pick up 15. I tell you, I've always loved the tight end. And uh, this year that Brock Heward and see the coaches in there working hard trying to figure the offense out of the Huskies eighth play of the drive coming up here Harris in the backfield the lone setback again the three tight end look for the Huskies Harris will try the left side has a little room 
Wayne Stewart will finally ride him back, but gentlemen, the Huskies are getting good gains on first down, which makes that second down play call a lot of fun. Watch the offensive line pushing out here, Cleet. Doing a good job. You see Cam Kissel, number 11, the H back, coming in and getting a little trap block, allowing Harris to get some good yardage. Second down and two from the 22, the Huskies with a nice sustained drive on their first possession. A little different from last week against San Jose State. But <laughs> it seemed like they scored on every play. Trips to the left for Hewer. Second down and two. Cougars come with the blitz. Hewitt gets the pass away, and it is incomplete. Almost a great catch by Jerome Pathan, but he was unable to hang on to it. Well, Washington State, from the defensive perspective, trying to get some pressure, bringing the safety Henderson, but he's picked up by the very experienced offensive line and just enough time. Hewitt throws it in the exact right spot. Pretty good coverage, but Payton just unable to get his other hand free. Actually, he's busy pushing off. Yeah, <laughs> it's hard to tell who was pushing, but Jerome Payton has made a lot of circus catches this year and almost came up with that one. Well, third and two now. Dylan in the backfield. Cougs jump again. Dylan has it and has the first down. And Dylan just keeps plowing and still hasn't gone down. Finally wrestled down at about the 12-yard line. Well, there's a little example of what James Darling was talking about. He said Corey Dillon, he doesn't carry six people downfield like the Colorado backs. I think Corey Dillon gave him a little bit right there. Dillon now five carries, 34 yards in the early going. Husky's chewing up a lot of time. You can see the time remaining in this first quarter. Scoreless game. But that may change as the Huskies have a first down at the Cougar 13. Dillon will try the right side. Dillon to the five yard line. Big Bob Sapp out leading the way that time. Well, nothing real fancy right here. Three tight ends effectively with Kissel at an H back position. The Cougars with that fast trio of linebackers with. Johnny Nansen and Moore at the outside linebacker position, but both of those kids are under the 215 mark right now. And right, if you're looking at a uh, str strategy, the Huskies are saying, we're just gonna bring our big bodies against your fast little bodies and we're gonna win the battle. And Bob Sapp can move for a big guy. Second and two dogs at the Cougar five. Dylan, right side, wrapped up for a loss this time. Cougars stunted right into that one. It's a guessing game down there. That time the Cougars had the right call on, bringing people again. Five minutes, 25 seconds, and counting off the clock as the Huskies started on their own 21. Brock Heward, redshirt freshman out of Puyallup, getting the play call from the sidelines. See what the Huskies do here. Play fake into the end zone, or do they try Mr. Dillon again? Here come the Cougars. They give it to Dillon, and that's Brandon Moore. Drops Dillon for the loss, and the Huskies have a decision to make. I would imagine they'll go for the field goal. Well, you can see that one coming all the way. Mr. Brandon Moore was sneaking up and creeping up to the line of scrimmage, and he busted through there. Very good play by Brandon Moore. Well, again, here's the quickness coming into to play that the, the Cougars elect to come with the stunt. Brandon Moore scoops inside of the tight end, Cleland, and then he's able to, as Coney Coates actually, the tackle, but they're able to knife in and get Corey Dillon before he can get that big body moving forward. John Wales to attempt the field goal. He's seven for 12 this year. This will be a 23 yard attempt, right hash. Set down, plenty of distance, and he got it. The Huskies draw first blood. 7.02 left to play in the first quarter. It's the Huskies leading the Cougars 3-0 in Apple Cup number 89. You're watching Cougar football on Fox Sports Northwest.
So the Huskies with an impressive drive. John Wales connects with the field goal to make it 3 nothing. And let's see what uh, this kick return will have in store for us. Last time, Moore and Cola brought it out. Now the pooch kick. And it will be fielded by, I believe, Sean Timms. And he is dropped at the 28. So the Huskies did a nice job of covering that. Sean Timms, who returns punts for the Cougars, probably thought he was returning one right there. All right, Cleet, after the first three and out, what have the Cougar coaches decided to do differently offensively? Well, I think what they've seen, first of all, is as you look at the scoring drive for the Huskies, a nice job on their part, although they only came away with three points. But uh, what the Cougars have seen is Ink Aliaga is not going to go out uh, and be replaced with a fifth DB. And so there's a matchup there they can take advantage, trying to get Michael Black out or the, the wide receivers on a, a linebacker. Cougars play fake to Black. Leaf throwing deep for Jackson, and it is incomplete. The coverage by Jermaine Smith, and Smith almost caught that football out of bounds. Young man playing in his first Apple Cup, and he survives test number one. Two pretty good redshirt freshmen out there, Jermaine Smith and Mel Miller on the other side. Quite a surprise for the Husky coaching staff. And you know, Cleet, you have a redshirt freshman coming in for the season, and look at that steam come off. It looks like a lava rock. <laughs> <laughs> Dorian Booth over there working it up. I thought it was Grandpa on the Adams family. <laughs> Second and 10 for the Cougars. Huskies bouncing around. Leaf with the play call at the line of scrimmage. Short drop. Leaf guns it up the sideline for Carpenter, who can't make the catch. The Cougars wanted interference. They thought that Tony Parrish was playing Carpenter and not really looking for the ball. Once again, great coverage out on the wide receiver that time by the Huskies. Ryan Leaf is being forced to make the perfect throw. Uh, Sonny, it looks like the strategy at the corner is to take away the slant and force the perfect throw up the sidelines, try to hit a window or go over the top of the defender. Huskies must think they can run with these Cougar wide receivers. Third and 10 for the Cougars, who failed on a third and six earlier. Leaf being pressured, guns it, overthrew it, and it was almost intercepted. Threw it over the head of Sean Timms, and it was Tony Parrish who had a chance but couldn't pick it off at midfield. The Cougars will punt it away again. That's something I've seen from Ryan Leaf this season. You guys have seen it more than I have, but here's a look at it right here. He had time to get rid of the football, but his accuracy has been off in a few of the games. And right there, he fooled Tony Parrish enough he couldn't make the pick. Banks to punt it away again. Got off a pretty good kick the first time. Dave Janoski, the return man for the Huskies, sets up camp at his own 30. Banks has time. Another high driving spiral. This is a good kick. Janoski at his 25. He'll bring it straight forward. Try to get outside now. And he's got an avenue. Janoski hauled down from behind, but into Cougar territory. So the Huskies, who had a nice drive before, have good field position now. 3-0. Huskies lead the Cougars. They're watching Cougar football brought to you by your local Pepsi-Cola bottler. My apologies, that was not Dave Janoski returning that last punt for the Huskies. It was Joe Jarzinko who did a nice job getting the Huskies good field position at the Cougar 45. Dillon in the backfield behind Heward. Again, Kissel lined up in the H-back position. Could those have been Husky fans expecting to go to the Cotton Bowl we just saw? Heward, the throw. Wants to go deep. Pathan can't hang on. That was shades of 1992. Drew Bledsoe to Philip Bobo and C.J. Davis without the snow as Pathan made the dive and couldn't hang on to it. Well, that's two passes he's been close to, re to getting, but I tell you, it's really tough to lay out like that. You see Brock with a lot of time to get rid of the football. Not much of a rush by the Cougars that time. 
just laid it out about a step too far, Cleet. Oh, that's a pretty, pretty great effort that time by Faithon, who made a brilliant move selling the post. Uh, and Brock's just a little disappointed, but brings up second and 10. Look out for Dylan. And here comes the Marshall to the left side. Cougars trying to strain out, did a pretty nice job that time. Demore and Cola came up from his cornerback position. And a wise decision for Moore and Cola, who's listed at 190. That might be generous for going down low and not trying to take Corey Dillon on. That's what the Cougars want to do is force Dillon, who is a very good north and south runner. The thing I've been most impressed is, is how he's willing to take it up into the hole, even if there isn't there. But if, if you get him going the sidelines, you can take his feet out from underneath him and get away from those big, ugly shoulder pads. Hey, hit him low. Third and eight for the Huskies. Cougars showed blitz at first. Now they back off a bit. They throw the pass for Payton, and it was thrown way too high. Somebody was on the wrong page there. Little flanker screen that did not connect, and the Huskies will have to punt it away. Well, that time the Cougars, I think, uh, had the exact right play called on defense, where they're sitting back in a zone, show a little bit of blitz, then back out of it. Uh, they got burned last week against Stanford by blitzing on third and long. They decided to come out of it, and uh, they had the right play called that time against uh, the Huskies, and they'll force the Huskies to punt when they had pretty good field position to start this drive. Sean Timms to return this punt from Hamid Sarshar, who will do the punting today after Jeff Prince started the game last week against San Jose State. This one hanging high and probably will make it into the end zone, and it does. So the Cougars will begin operations from their own 20, and they will have to see what they can do in terms of generating some offense in this contest. As so far, they've had a couple of three and outs, and on the last possession, Ryan Leaf threw three consecutive incomplete passes, so he's 0 for 4 on the day. Let's see if they try to get the ball to Michael Black here a little bit. Uh, Ryan Leaf is, uh, doesn't have the correct personnel in to the football game. He's looking for a tight end, I believe, as Jefferson hustles in. Remember last year, the Cougars came out with the, the little wrinkle with the tight ends, rather two years ago here in Pullman. Actually, I have two backs in here this time, something Cougs aren't really used to seeing. Delayed handoff to Michael Black, and he is able to break one tackle and is able to pick up a yard that was all his, and we got a little fisticuffs going on down there. Jason Chorak and Michael Black mixing it up a little bit. Those Vashon guys are supposed to be laid back and mellow, aren't they? <laughs> Not Jason. Jason's a real competitor out there. I'm sure that uh, Michael Black is also. A little chewing going on down there. Gain of a yard for Michael Black, who's number two in the Pac-10 in rushing. He'd like to have a 116-yard day to get to 1,000 yards. He's missed some time this year with an ankle injury. Second and nine, Cougars with four wideouts. They do not have a tight end in this alignment. Leaf, the short drop, quick toss, has a man wide open. It's Tims, the catch, and a gain of about six, and a good recovery by Jerry Jensen. That one could have become a big play. Washington State trying to get a little bit of Mix up in the secondary by a crossing route. See Stanford victorious over California. That has bowl implications all over it as the log jam continues. Third and three from the 27 for the Cougs. They'll give it to Black and he'll be swapped. Chris Campbell with the big hit for the Huskies. I think Jason Chorak was there as well. And for the third consecutive possession, the Cougars will have to punt it away after just three plays. That's something you talked about on the Cougars side, Clean, using their quickness. That's what the Huskies do with Chris Campbell. He gets in there, he knifes in quickly and able to make initial contact behind the line of scrimmage. He's undersized a little bit, Clean. He's gotta use that quickness. Banks to punt it away. And it is Jarzinka again, and he again will have to retreat, makes the catch, loses footing, and then goes down. So not much of a return that time, but the Huskies again will have the football. 3-0, they lead the Washington State Cougars. 3.51 to go, first quarter.
by Namick. Clayton Casper, Sonny Six Killer with the Cougars leading 3 0 over with the Huskies leading 3 0. I was going to say, Sonny's wait a minute, bud. <laughs> you have not met the fourth member of our broad broadcast crew today. Let's go down to the sidelines to Lance Jacob. Thanks a lot, bud. Just wanted to bring you up to date. The Cougar coaching staff is very concerned about how much time the defense is spending on the field. They want at least a first down or something from Ryan Leaf in the offense back upstairs. Either Brock here trying to keep his hands warm or going to a hand signal for a play call change, and Mr. Dillon picks up about three. That's a little example of what you mentioned, Cleet, running between the tight end or tackle, the tackle going east and west or north and south, whatever direction we're going here. Corey Dillon picking this hole and finding some positive yards. Those are those ugly four yards he keeps on talking about. Uh, it doesn't look like much, but you get down and it's second and six, second and seven now for Jim Lambright and his guys. Steve Morton standing next to him, the offensive line coach, former Cougar player and Cougar offensive line coach. Long count on second and seven. Short drop by Heward, and he gets it to the tight end. Cam Cleveland will get to the 39. They might mark his progress at the 40. It takes at least three or four guys to bring Cam Cleveland down. He's really been a favorite target of Brock Heward. Uh, obviously, uh, being 6'5 and 265, he sticks out like a sore thumb. And I don't mind uh, Brock Heward looking for him. Big guy out of Cedro Woolley. Also played a little baseball for the Huskies. So this is a big third down for the Cougar defense. They'd sure like to get that offense back on the field. Like uh, Lance said, spending a lot of time out there this first quarter. Third and three for the Huskies. A little better than three, actually. Dylan will try it, and he won't get it. Cougars with the stop, and Huskies are going to have to punt it away. Half a yard short, really an interesting twisting uh, tackle that was made on Corey Dillon. The spot is going to bring it back. You see that Dorian Boos and uh, again Moore is able to get in there. No room in the middle. Holmes and Bender doing a nice job stacking it up. And they're going to go ahead and bring the chains on to measure this one. Got a pretty nice spot, really. The way he had been spun down, I thought it was going to be a little closer to the 41. I thought it was a foregone conclusion, but let's see what the officials have to say once they bring the chains out. I got it. <laughs> Jeez. A little help from the crowd. Oh, they did get it. Johnny Nansen not very happy. And he says something to get Gordon Reese smiling. Well, first down Huskies then. Here you see uh, Moore come in and spin it around. It looks like uh, that ball is in the left hand and that he has not fallen forward there. But uh, that's enough for the first down. And that's one for the Huskies. We'll hey. give you that one. That's all you're going to get, though, son. Hey, it's a neutral crew, <laughs> so I can say. <laughs> Keep it fair. Keep it fair. Yeah. Inside of two minutes to play, opening quarter. Huskies with a 3 0 lead. Cougars coming with the blitz and balls on the carpet. The Cougars have it. James Darling taking a shot himself as he runs off the field, but absolutely had that one spelled out right. It looks like the Cougars have a blocking play on here for James Darling who comes in untouched, strips the ball before Dylan can get to it and Cougars are there. Gary Holmes wraps it up in a big swing in events there. Here you see again, Darling splits it. Nobody there to pick him up. And that's just a, just intercepted a flat out. The handoff. You know who that's a mistake on? That's a mistake on Brock Heward because he's got to recognize he's running that right into the hole. Everybody's covered. Ryan Leaf now on to see if he can generate some O. First turnover of the game. Leaf trying to buy some time. Screen to Black, and he will be hauled down. Loss of about eight yards. Lester Towns, who's a freshman out of Pasadena, with the tackle for the loss there. That thwarts the Cougar momentum. Lester Towns was eyeballing number five, sneaking out of the backfield, read it perfectly, and came up and delivered a blow. Here's a kid that gets about 25, 30 plays a game in there for John Fiala, who is the Husky leading tackler, Cleet, and he's a real hitter. No, he lines up over the uh, the tight end on that play and does not bite at all that the tight end's releasing inside. He stays home, 
and uh, doesn't run himself out of position. Good play for the young man. Cougars having some trouble. They're sputtering on offense. Black the lone setback, as you saw a little work being done on Leon Bender's ankle on the sideline. Leaf guns it, has his man, and drop. Nyan Taylor was open. Would have been a Cougar first down, but Taylor couldn't hang on to it. Well, they had the matchup that they like, uh, the speedy Taylor on the safety Miller, and he was able to get inside position on him. Good pass protection all the way around. That ball is pretty well thrown. Got to have that one. That's been the difference for the Cougars from the winning streak early in the year to the losing streak currently. They just are not making plays in key situations. And here's another one, third and 18 now. If they fail to get the first down here, this will be their fourth drive of the first quarter that goes three and out. Got one on one down low here again, Taylor on Miller. Leaf being pressured, steps up, throws, has his man open, McWashington can't make the catch. Leaf was under pressure, couldn't get enough on it. McWashington tried to make the sliding catch and couldn't. And the Cougars will have to punt it away again. Hard to tell who he was throwing to on that particular play. Looks like he might have been throwing to the other receiver and McWashington almost coming up with a great catch. Well, again, pretty good pass protection. There's a cup there. Ryan just standing flat-footed, <laughs> just face mask after he throws that football. And unfortunately, that time, Ryan was right on target with, at least in that drive, with two throws. Uh, that ball was very catchable. Washington, I think, might have misjudged it a little bit, throwing into the wind. Banks to punt it away, shanked it, and it goes out of bounds at about the 25, 26 yard line. You don't see that from Banks very often. I'm sure you guys haven't this season. It's had a great average coming into the ball game. Husky band members putting the lips on the metal and hoping they come off. <laughs> They've been like that since the beginning of the game. 26 seconds left in the opening quarter. It'll be Husky football at their own 26. Huskies really have dominated the first 15 minutes, but it has not been reflected on the scoreboard. Well, the last two series, though, they've been a little bit uh, out of sync a little bit, obviously with the fumble being a big turnover, but not the Cougars haven't been able to capitalize on it. There you see Leon Bender in on the defensive line. They've retaped the ankle, apparently. Heward to throw, and Jerome Pathon makes the catch first down for the Huskies out at the 38-yard line of Washington State. Well, the Huskies up here in the booth, uh, Coach Lenahan and Coach Morton down on the field, they're saying, hey, uh, we've got eight men on the line of scrimmage. We've got to do a little play action on first down just to get the Cougars back out of this eight-man alignment there. Nice move again by uh, Jerome to break off the out. Nice throw and catch. And uh, It's a lot easier to pick up guys blitzing up through the gaps when you're pass protecting as opposed to trying to set up a run blocking scheme. Dillon the lone setback, Kissel the H-back. This is Dillon going to try the left side. Steps forward and finds a hole and picks up about five yards or so. Dwayne Stewart on the tackle. And that should be the final play of the opening quarter. And as the clock ticks down, the Cougar fans are thinking, where's that snow that was supposed to come in? No, they're, they're trying to recheck their thermos, see if they've got enough to last this report. <laughs> Three nothing, Huskies lead the Cougs. You're watching the Apple Cup on Fox Sports Northwest. Second quarter ready to get underway. Huskies lead at 3-0 over the Washington State Cougars. The first quarter yardage, 92 yards for the Huskies, zero for Washington State. Wow, that's unbelievable. A couple big uh, tackles for losses uh, when that screenplay, they lost about eight, 10 yards on that one, Cleet. Second and five Huskies from their own 43. You were changing the play call apparently at the line of scrimmage. The short drop throws it up the sidelines for Payton, and we got a flag, it's gonna be interference. But on whom? The ball was caught out of bounds. They'll call it an incomplete pass. Is it offensive or defensive pass interference? We'll let the officials sort it out. It's against the Cougs. 
Nathan uh, limping a little bit there, as you can see him asking for someone else to come in for him. That's a pretty tough call. It looked like for me uh, that it may have been the fact that uh, pass interference, Hinchin defense, 15 yards from the previous spot, automatic first down. Well, I was saying that it looked like Hinchin had pretty good position, and they may have just called it because. Uh, he did not have his head turned around looking back at the ball and was fighting, slapping at hands in there. Uh, officials right there and, and made a, you know, instantaneous decision. There's no doubt about it. So uh, I'm just going to give him the benefit of the doubt. And that's two for the Huskies, Sonny. <laughs> You're way over your limit. Hey. Back to Montlake with those crew. I tell you, Jerome Payton has landed on the turf pretty hard on three occasions and uh, saw him limp off the field. A line of scrimmage now, the Cougar 42. Flag thrown as Dylan is tackled for a loss of a yard behind the line of scrimmage. Shad Hinchin. James Darling. James Darling in there. Trying to plead that he was not offside with the linesman, but he's going to get nicked. Thought he timed it perfectly, but he might have been leaning over the neutral zone. And that's three now. I'm getting tired of this. <laughs> Don't these guys know where they are? At? Offside. Defense. Five yards from the previous spot, still first down. Wait a minute, you're, I thought you were Cleet Casper, not Paul Sorensen. <laughs> that's right. Oh. <laughs> Boy, I've, 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 I've been called some bad things in my life, but that's as low as it gets. <laughs> Gentlemen. I tell you, the Huskies need to adjust a little bit, though, seriously, with uh, the guy getting up in the gap like that. There's three or four times now. We've seen him, and they've come every time. You can't hand the ball off deep to a running back. Well, the Cougars obviously have the uh, the blocking assignments down and are, are splitting the, the seam where no one's uh, available to pick them up. Heward pressured. He's going to have to run it. He'll be sandwiched at about the 35-yard line. Good coverage by the Cougars on that play, forcing Brock to get what he can. I think they're married. <laughs> at least they were before they got here today. <laughs> look at that look. <laughs> She's had about enough of him. It was a great look. They look warm. Brock Hewitt's got some equipment trouble, and uh, the Huskies may be forced to bring in Fortney here for a play anyway as uh, the helmet. Brock's trying to get a timeout so that he can get his equipment fixed. The official says no. Nope. Now you'll have to call timeout. The Huskies burn one. Timeout, Washington, number one. 13-51 left to play in the first half. Huskies lead the Cougars 3-0. They're watching the Apple Cup on Fox Sports Northwest. Huskies out in front, three nothing. Let's go down to the sidelines to Lance Jacob. Thanks a lot, bud. Just to update the situation on Leon Bender, he twisted his ankle in the previous series. I'm not sure how he could feel his ankle in this temperature, but he's okay. They taped him up. He's still performing rather well, and he can still move. He's pretty agile. And Sonny, Jerome Payton just had the wind knocked out of him. Out of him. He's okay. He's back out there, back upstairs. All righty. Thank you, Lance Jacob. Good indoctrination from a young guy from Louisiana to be on the sidelines down here. <laughs> it looks like he's prepared for it. Second down and three for the Huskies. Ball resting on the Cougar 35-yard line. Corey Dillon in the backfield. Three tight ends for the Dogs. Back to the formula that was successful for him earlier. Dillon, nothing doing. Washington State doing a nice job of controlling the line of scrimmage right now. We apologize, we're having some video difficulties. We will work on getting those ironed out. This is a time when the Huskies need to find their tight end again and try and take some pressure and force those linebackers that are cheating up to respect the short pass. Actually loss of about a length of the football on that second down play. It'll be third and three from the 35 for the Huskies. Coleman flanked to the right, Jerome Payton to the left. Two tight ends with Dillon in the backfield. Here comes Darling. Dillon, first down for the Huskies. Got it by about a yard. Credit that one to the right side of that Husky line. They did a nice job. Well, the other thing, too, on that play is that it was a quicker hitter in uh, 
Corey Dillon able to get up to the line of scrimmage and the quarterback getting the handoff in a quicker fashion when you have to hand off five or six yards deep allows those linebackers to get to him. So the Huskies with a first down at the Cougar 31 yard line. Huskies had a long drive in the first quarter that resulted in the three points. Interesting alignment right here as Huskies set the strength into the boundary with the two wide receivers down low, then they're gonna play fake. Heward over the middle, wants Pathon into double coverage and it's incomplete. Jerome never had a chance at that football. Pretty good coverage that time uh, last year in last year's game. Damon Heward was able to squeeze a, a couple of those throws in for big plays. I'm sure the Cougars have reviewed those tapes, especially Coach Bray in the secondary, making sure, hey, knock it down, as Tom Jackson said. <laughs> well, the good thing about the calls, I'm sure that Coach Lambright, you still have to make those, whether you're successful or not. It, it tells the defense you've got to respect the throws down the field. Second down, 10 for the Huskies. Again, the three tight end alignment. Dillon will try the right side, and he'll be turned back just inside the 30. So a gain of about two on that play. It'll set up a third and long, and the Cougar defense has made some nice adjustments, and now you expect the Husky offense to adjust back. Well, again, uh, the forcing Corey Dillon to, to go really side to side here. They're trying to work that counter tray, which is, in effect is the outside running game out of this one back situation. Cougars stuffed it up in the middle, and then inside out pursuit. People fill in the lanes, nice bit of work that James Darling has been involved in just about every play on defense. Third and 10, obvious passing down. Ninth play of the drive for the Huskies. Here come the Cougars after Heward. He rolls out to buy some time, gets a good block, and has a receiver. First down, Huskies. I believe it's the tight end Cleveland who made the catch. Down at the 15. Shows you a little athletic ability of the offensive lineman, Olin Krutz, to get out there to level. Dwayne Stewart, 25 for the Cougars. Watch this, Cleet. This is the kind of blocking all quarterbacks like to get when you're being pursued. Brilliant throw that time. Henderson's right there. And Brock being chased, able to just look on downfield, having the confidence that here comes Big wow. Olin, and I'm not going to get hit on this one. Nice bit. You usually don't see your centers being that athletic. First and 10 dogs at the Cougar 14. Three tight end alignment again. Here come the Cougars. There goes Dillon. That was sort of the irresistible force and the immovable object once he got <laughs> down about the 10 yard line. Nobody was gonna give any ground. Cougars love to jump on the pile, so to speak, and that time the Huskies were able to come back and uh, jump on the pile themselves. Mike Price, a little anxious right now, his defense getting backed up, and like Lance alluded to earlier, that uh, they've been on the, the football field a whole lot. Well, the offense is over on the sidelines with cold feet right now. The offense has been cold everything so far. They haven't gained a yard yet this game. Dillon in the backfield on second down and six from the 10. Dillon will try it outside and is going to be hit, dropped at about the seven. Progress might be marked to about the six, but it's going to set up third and about a yard, and the Cougar defense would love to force a field goal again in this situation. Corey a little bit frustrated again. He's getting hit. He wants those uh, San Jose holes to open back up again like last week. Good hustle by Nansen to boost. And... Uh, Actually, pretty good game, bringing down to third and one. Cougars were able to stunt, make something happen the last time that they were in this situation. Huskies bring in the two wide receivers. George Kiao, the fullback, also in. Cleland, the lone tight end, he's on the right side of the line. They need about two yards. There goes Dillon. Dillon has the first down at about the two for the Huskies. mentioned George Kieho on that play. He's in there for one reason, and that's to block somebody, and that time he led Corey Dillon up through the hole, which I kind of like down here. Cleet, it's third and two, and you got the power game. This is the true power game right here. Fullback, tailback, straight at the defense. Absolutely nice job by Johnson, the, the big tackle, 
moved Gary Holmes out there. Gary's 300 plus pounds, and so if you're getting the leverage, getting underneath him, that's what the key to that play was. Mike Price hoping for something better. Dylan has seven carries on this drive. He has 19 for the game already, 70 yards. First and goal from the two. Here's Dylan again. Tries to bounce it outside and won't happen. No gain as the Cougar defense stands up on first down. Washington State sells out. Pinch and the cornerback is in the backfield making that <laughs> tackle. So uh, if you're Scott Linehan up in the booth, you're just itching to throw a play action. But uh, I would guess they're still just going to try to pound this away and give it to the Pac-10's leading ground gainer and leading scorer. There you see the current drive started way back when, Until five minutes and 40 wow. seconds ago. 12 minutes that the Huskies have used up on those two big drives. They need to get more than three points, though, to really make it successful. Uh, we'll take three. <laughs> Second and goal to go from the three. Dylan to the one. Chad Hitchin fired up. He likes making those tackles. Isn't he? Like I said, he's not got no one to cover. He's going ahead and trying to get in there and, and throw his 170 pounds worth at Corey's 225 so far, where he's been able to get close but not in. Five straight carries for Corey Dillon now. The Cougars have done a good job of going low on Corey Dillon and grabbing those feet, preventing him from coming in. Cougars elect to call timeout. They use their first one of the half. Number one. They want to talk it over, see if they can figure out a way to slow down that guy. 7.55 left to play first half. Huskies lead the Cougars by three. You're watching the Apple Cup on Fox Sports Northwest. Third and goal from the one. Dillon uses the power. Touchdown, Washington. Well, you're not going to be able to bring him down if you take him up around the chin. Those big a shoulder pads get it done, and uh, Dwayne Stewart not able to stop 225 pounds of uh, big dog right now. Huskies will go up, nine zip. Wales on to take a shot at the extra point. The announcer here, how about Shane Fortney? Shane Fortney, the holder, he does a good job to get that one down as that snap was low and Wales boots it through. So it's 10-0 in favor of the Huskies with 7.51 left in the half and two very impressive long drives by the Huskies. This time, Dylan gets it into the end zone. Well, you Here's said it, Cleet. Tackling a guy that big up high when you're a safety is not going to work. Well, not many players are going to be able to stop him when he's got the momentum, but uh, that was just a man on man. And <laughs> it only was for a half a yard, but that's all Corey needed. So the dogs will jump up 10 zip, and uh, Washington State now needs to wake up the offense a little bit and see if they can't get maybe a first down or something along those lines because so far uh, execution has been nil on the Cougar side of the ball, which is a little unexpected because they practice in this weather. They're used to the cold, and the Huskies haven't exactly put a lot of pressure on Ryan Leaf to force errant throws. I uh, just need to get a little something going here. There's a look at the Huskies. They try to stay warm. Got a couple of heaters on the sidelines. I've got a couple of heaters right here. <laughs> <laughs> right here. There's a little teeth, pocket warmers Your teeth are great. were chattering. I didn't hear what you said, Sonny. Cougars will have more in Cola and McKenzie deep as you take a look at that Husky scoring drive. Two 14 play scoring drives. One eight up six minutes and 48 seconds. This one eight minutes and 15 seconds. It's tough to move the ball when you don't get your hands on it. Well, the kickoff so far has been very entertaining. Uh, Wales with one deep one that was uh, returned out of the end zone and another pooch kick. Let's see what uh, the dog decide to come up with here. Kicking into the wind this time. Again, it's that short pooch kick. It'll be Tim's again. And Sean has an avenue. He's across midfield. 
Still on his feet, finally run out of bounds. Cougars will have great field position at the 38 of the University of Washington. Number eight, Sean Tim on that return. Sean Timms, the punt returner, has been placed in that position specifically for that reason. Here he's going to take it, bust through the, the initial wave, and Wales is the guy that just gets enough of him to slow him down, and the rest of the gang comes over and makes a tackle. So excellent field position. you got to question that pooch kick. And uh, Well, it's the first time, really, that the Huskies have seen a, a punt returner in that position. Normally it's been a tight end or a fullback type player. Cougar offense needs to get something going. They have double tight ends, black in the backfield as they have it, first and 10 at the dog, 38. Leap will give it to Black. He'll try to bounce it outside. Michael with a good first down gain. And that's the first time today Washington State's been able to do that. Josh Smith just comes up, he's fired up. He got hit downfield by a Cougar lineman and he wanted none of that. Good first down pickup this time, the first time that Washington State's first down play has uh, netted him any yardage. Huskies jumping around a lot uh, on the line of scrimmage, trying to confuse the blocking, jumping from a, a base set to an eagle set. They're four or five down linemen sometimes. Now they're in the four down stance, Jensen in an up position. Corey Dillon moving up on the Pac-10 charts for scoring as he leads the nation in scoring. Delayed handoff or fake the black and the pass is complete. To love Jefferson, who makes his first catch as a Cougar, but he'll pick up just a yard on it. Good pressure, Jason Chorak, first time today. He's actually got some, uh, that crimson jersey of Ryan Leaf. Doesn't bite at all on the play action here. He's just nothing but big crimson jersey in his <laughs> rabid dog approach to this football game. Plays with a lot of intensity, a lot of desire. About third and three for the Cougars, and they desperately need to convert this. Well, this is almost uh, two down territory if you're thinking like I am. I, I'd go ahead and punch it in here, needing to get uh, three yards in two plays. That'd kind of be my mentality. Cougars spread it out with four wide receivers, black in the backfield. Short drop, leap over the middle for McKenzie, who can't make the catch. Now it becomes fourth down, and what are they going to do? Well, it, it's a difficult spot to kick from. You do have the wind with you, and uh, Mike Price is sending his offensive group back in. Uh, it, it would be a ball be spotted at the 31-yard line, so you'd be looking at about a 47-48-yard uh, field goal, which is in Tony's range. But I, I think the Cougars want to get a first down and, and score six points, maybe even just come up the line of scrimmage and try to draw the dogs off sides here. Cougars have been successful on fourth down this year. But not many have been of this nature. They need to pick up three yards. They want Black on the screen, and he can't make the catch. Good pressure on Leaf. He had to throw it sooner than he wanted to. So the Huskies will take over on downs at the Cougar 31 in Washington State unable to take advantage of good field position. They are still looking for their first first down of this football game. Well, uh, I guess I'm a, I'm a little bit confused why they aren't running the ball a little bit better or a little bit more here. You've got the play. Sometimes, Sonny, as you know, that's the most difficult throw there is when the back's just running directly away from you. At an angle. And, uh, and sometimes it's a real difficult throw, but we've seen them make it all year long. That time, uh, key play, not able to come up with it, and the defense back on the field tough to throw when you've got Jerry Jensen in your face. Huskies did a lot of pressure the last two plays on Ryan Lee. With 6.44 left in the half, the Huskies might be able to run out the clock here. Dillon up the middle, bounces off one tackler and carries the pile for about eight yards. Again, north-south is what Corey Dillon excels in. Just making one cut and slashing almost a, a Chris Warren type of tailback, uh, very much like the, the Seahawks. All pro. It makes it tough for the Cougar defensive front. You know, if they've been banged up, they're looking at the time of possession, 13 minute difference. Huskies lead the Pac-10 in time of possession and the Cougars are down in that standings. You might, you might want to look at the down linemen if they're banged up coming in, they're really getting banged on right now. Second and two. Play fake to Dillon. Heward throws it up and it is caught. Beautiful catch by Fred Coleman. Chad Engine with the coverage. First down, Huskies at the 47 of Washington State. That was a very long throw. It was in the air for a long time, but very accurately thrown by Brock Heward. 
Good job by Fred Coleman. He uh, hasn't really been that productive here of late, but it's good to see him back out there contributing to the Husky offense. Well, more evidence of the lopsided nature of this first half so far. Uh, Cougs without a first down. All Husky so far. Only 10 to nothing, though. Looking at the stats, you might think it would be a wider margin. Dylan will try the left side. Got a good surge from the line and picks up about six. And on this drive, the Huskies again getting good first down gain, something that they hadn't been for a while. Well, it's the confidence of the offensive line. They've been doing it the whole season for the Huskies. You see the heater up there. We need one of those up here in the press box. We'll have to hustle down and yeah. maybe we can send you guys down at halftime to get that, okay? <laughs> no problem. We'll get our... Uh, our usher uniforms on and uh, commandeer the, the heater, but it's not that bad out here. Been a heck of a lot worse conditions. Second and four for the dogs. Line of scrimmage, the Cougar 40. Inside of five minutes to go, and we got some jumping. Cougars want to say they were drawn off. Huskies don't agree. We'll let the officials be the arbiters. Cougs walking backwards like uh, they're guilty. They're trying to time that cadence. Bring the blitz and uh, young Before Brock the York. snap, offside, defense. Five yards from the previous spot, and the yardage is enough for a first down. Brock Heward does that. <laughs> There's a great, <laughs> a great new uh, slogan out there. Ted Bundy was a Husky. I don't know about that. Did you know him? I don't know. I don't think it's uh, appropriate <laughs> to do that kind of thing. Well, of course you don't, but uh, that's why you went to the UW. Well. Anyway, on to football. First to 10 from the 35 yard line for the Huskies. Huskies pick up a Cougar blitz. Cleland, the intended receiver, and the ball batted away. Dwayne Stewart with a nice coverage that time. Very nice coverage. Out there guarding that other tackle of the Huskies on the line. Cam Cleland, the big tight end. Pretty good job of uh, pass protection again for, for Brock Hewitt, who's not been roughed up at all, except for the time he decided to tuck it and, and pick up two or three yards on his own. And so far, he's been more willing just to get rid of that football. <laughs> Four and a half minutes to go in this first half. Huskies lead it 10-0 over the Washington State Cougars. Jason Harris back in the backfield for the Dogs. He'll get the football, try to bounce it outside. Falls forward after being hit by James Darling and Dwayne Stewart. Almost spun out of there. Looked like three Cougars hit him and uh, he didn't realize that there were none left. <laughs> that was he, if he'd have kept his balance, he had a lot of room to run. It'll be third and eight now from the 34. So big play for the Huskies. Cougar defense will see if they can stop this. With the way John Wales has been kicking, this is basically out of his range. George Schiajo, Corey Dillon in the backfield. That's Fred Coleman in motion. Looking for Jerome Payton, and it's thrown too high. Shad Hinchin with the coverage. And we'll see what the Huskies do here. They're going to punt it away. It's almost that situation, Sonny, where you're not going to gain a whole lot by a punt if it happens to get into the end zone. So some teams will elect to give it a try on fourth down here but it's tough on fourth and eight very tough but you know the thing is that you don't want to you want to still try and pin him back inside the 10 the, the Cougars I'm speaking of I think Lambright's just thinking uh, with three minutes left to go well as Leon Bender jumps off well this might change the thinking a little bit yes it could make it fourth and four looking at a little bit different call it's just mind-boggling to me that that type Before of play the snap, Offside on a defense. Five yards from the previous spot. Still fourth down. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna bring on Wales now to take a shot and, and actually uh, the five yards just gets him inside his range where it makes it a 46 yard attempt, which will be tough as long as 42 this year. I'll tell you Leon Bender though, <laughs> better wait till the ball snap. Just once. Yeah, please. <laughs> I'm sure Coach Price is hoping for him to just watch the football. Well, this uh, interesting change of events here. 
Shane Fortney to hold it. It's blocked. Brandon Moore's got it. He's going to try to give the Cougars some field position. He's got a couple of blockers. Moore will be knocked out of bounds at the 45. And Leon Bender says, thank you very much. See, he's over here letting everybody know that's exactly how they planned it. It was all strategy, and that's exactly why I did it. <laughs> Leon, you can get a flag if you don't get off the field. Fortunately, he's too far away from the play. Again, the Huskies decide to go ahead. They've had trouble with the snap all year. This one's just a little bit low. Brandon has an escort down the sidelines, and this almost turns into an incredible swing of events, but as it is, Washington State has the ball just outside their own 45-yard line. Two backs, they've got Dewan Gilmore and Michael Black in the backfield, and the Cougars in a situation now where they need to take advantage of an opportunity that's been given to them. But I tell you what, if they can go in the locker room 10-7 at the half, that would be a big boost for them, given the way this first half has gone so far. Especially since the snow's supposed to get here at halftime. At halftime. That's when you ordered it, didn't you, Clay? <laughs> That's exactly right. Ryan Leaf on now, two backs. Pro set. Interesting formation. Cooks don't see this much. They'll give it to Black. He tries to bounce it outside. Corey Withrow the block, and Black with a good first down game. He takes on a Husky and comes close to a first down. Again, the running game has been fairly successful. Michael Black making a lot on his own, setting up the block of his big guard, McIndoo. Jumps around the corner and picks up nine yards on that first down carry. Doesn't get out of bounds, so the actually they do mark him out of bounds, and so they'll uh, stop that clock. Ryan Leaf has completed three passes today. Two have gone for negative yardage. And that play doesn't go for anything. So the Cougars are going to be faced with a third down again. Good pressure. David Ritchie, 97 that time for the Huskies, getting in the backfield. And again, knocking down behind the line of scrimmage. Loss of a yard. It'll be third and two. And Cleet, after the last experience, I'd almost like to see Washington State just try to run it. Two pops here to see if they can get a first down and change the tide a bit. Black, the lone setback. Carpenter, the wide receiver to the right. McWashington to the left. They'll tr play fake to Black. Leap, the throw, hit as he throws, and it's incomplete. Good pressure again. Incaliaga, the senior, getting in on the quarterback. There's a flag down, however, guys. Might be holding up at the top of your screen. It's off sides. Like Offsides is what they're going to call. Aliaga delivering a big blow. Boy, those are the ones that hurt where you just land and then the linebacker lands on top of you after <laughs> your head snaps and hits the cold turf. Well, that's one thing pressure is doing to Ryan Leaf today. We talked about in the pregame, two of 12. Offside, defense, five yards from the previous spot, and the yardage gives Washington State a first down. There's that first down we've been looking for. Well, the first one comes via penalty. We'll see if that opens the gates a bit for the Cougars. Plenty of time for the Cougars, did you see? 237. Again, the two back set. Husky show blitz, here they come. Michael Black, can he get by the wave? Yes. Can he bounce it outside? Not quite. Gain of about six on that play. And we got a little greetings being exchanged after that play as well i'll tell you what the officials have to have to know this is a rivalry game and they do a good job of trying to calm things down letting perhaps players get away with a little bit more emotionally than they might in another game but still well, trying to hang on to control thing you want to make sure you do is uh not get out of hand and not get thrown out of this football game because they'll do that just yes. to make a statement we've seen that in this football game And again, the running game thundered. Loss of two for Michael Black. We saw it last year when Frank Madu was kicked out of this game in Seattle. Jason Chorak creating a little havoc down there right now. Cougar offensive line not be able to get on track for Michael Black. Mike Price, that little play up the middle a lot of times is followed with play action pass. Well, they face a third and 
seven, maybe eight right here. They line of scrimmage of 39. They need to get to the 32. So call it third and seven. Leaf pressured, gets the ball away, and it's incomplete. Tough to throw when Jerry Jensen's got a hold of your shoulder pads. Jerry's been back there a few times for the dogs. Again, Ryan Leaf, third down, you know, coming in the ball game, what were they, 28% on third down conversions, and today it's uh, going down the other direction. Mike Price doing the tailoring, but he's not real fired up right now with, uh, with Ryan Leaf's performance. Doesn't like the fact that as Ryan Leaf's coming off the field, the head's down a little bit. He wants some, some fire out of his quarterback. Jeff Banks to boot it away. He'll be trying to pin the Huskies back. Joe Jarzinka at his own 10. Minute 10 left in the first half. Banks gets it very high. And the Cougars aren't able to down it as it takes the big bounce into the end zone. So the Huskies will have it at the 20 to get things started. One minute, one second left in the half. It's all Huskies so far. You're watching the Apple Cup on Fox Sports Northwest. Down here. 101 left in the first half. 10-0. Huskies lead the Cougars. Sonny, what's the Husky mentality here? As you see the time of possession, how skewed that is in favor of the Huskies. Is this a uh, just hand the ball off, take a knee sort of situation? I would or? think they'd want to give the ball to Mr. Dillon and uh, go in with a nice lead of 10 zip at halftime if it does end up that way here. Dillon has the football, breaks a couple tackles, loses a helmet, or actually a Cougar lost a helmet. <laughs> Hope there's a head not in there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Derek Henderson, a little pop. Good and cut back that time by Corey Dillon. Not much on the right side and kind of wiggled his way to the left, getting near that century mark. Unbelievable amount of workload he's been able to carry this year. and uh, 25 carries already. Wow not get too banged up. Being the focus of uh, most of the defenses here in the last four or five games. This will most likely be the final play of the half. Yes, it will be as Dillon's brought down at the line of scrimmage. Four if he'd have gotten the first down, it would have stopped the clock. So the first half very much in favor of the gentleman in the purple helmets with the gold W as Brock Heward heads off the field with his team in front. 10 to nothing. The Cougars have some remodeling to do at halftime. We'll be back with the second half. The Huskies lead the Cougars. You're watching the Apple Cup on Fox Sports Northwest. But name it, Cleet Casper, Sonny Six Killer, and Lance Jacob as the Huskies lead the Cougars at halftime, 10 0. Take a look at some of the action from the first half. The lone touchdown of this game, Corey Dillon, able to get into the end zone for his 20th touchdown of the year on the ground. Washington State blocking this John Wales field goal attempt. Brandon Moore with the catch and a nice run back to give the Cougars field position. But again, Cleet, Washington State unable to move the football once they had the field position. Well, as ugly as it's been on offense, you got to give the credit to the defense that they've been able to, you know, the big stat that's not shown here is there's only 10 points on that UW side of the scoreboard. And actually, if I'm Mike Price, I got to feel pretty good that I'm still in this football game even though I've only generated 16 yards of offense. <laughs> Third quarter, though, has been a, a big deal for the Huskies. They've scored some points in the third quarter, so uh, we'll see what happens. You know, there's two halves to every ball game, and certainly in the Apple Cup, you know it is. And of late, the Cougars have stumbled in the second half of football games. So far, they've stumbled in the first half of this one. Perhaps they can turn it around in the second half. 
There's a dog. A couple of dogs just don't know when to quit. <laughs> Junkyard dogs right there. That's when, that's great. A lot of people coming over to see Coach Lambright hopefully take the Huskies to victory today. Icy roads, snow. You know your true fans are when they make that trip over here. Looked like Jim Lambright decided to zip up the jacket here in the second half. It will be Jarzinka and Jerome Pay Thunderdy. Really, since Corey Dillon's been really relied on with the running attack, he has not been back returning kickoffs. Otherwise, his total offense would be much higher right now. Jim Lamb right there uh, ordering up another heater for the sidelines as he raises his hands and I'll take four more of those heaters, please. Mike Price not wearing the headset today. Tony Truant will kick it for Washington State. And he will kick it deep into the wind and it will be caught on the sideline by Jarzinka at the 13 and he'll be head over heels. At about the 27 yard line. Steve Gleason, the madman, goes in there and chops him right at the knees. Looks like he had a little open lane, but closed in a hurry. So Brock Hewitt will come on and try to march the dogs down. Billy Dietrich giving a little advice, saying, hand off to four, hand off to four. Well, I tell you, Brock Hewitt's a fine, natural leader. And you know, Cleet, it's uh, not that often you'll see a redshirt freshman come in and take over a leadership role of the team like he has. Dillon will be the lone setback, two tight ends, and then Kissel, the H-back. 27th carry of the game for Corey Dillon, and he will pick up three, maybe four yards. Johnny Nansen in on another stop for Washington State. Look at the first half possessions for the Huskies, Sonny. Not too bad. You'd like to have more on that first field goal made there. Huskies would rather have had a touchdown. The punt, the fumble, the TD, block field goal, and uh, not too bad. You know, the feeling here is that the Husky fans felt like the score should at least be 17 zip, the way they manhandled the Cougars in the first half. I don't know about that manhandle stuff. Let's not get too out over our skis. <laughs> you were to throw on second down, wants Payton, and it makes a nice comeback to the football, makes the catch out at the 49. Ball's underthrown. But that works to Payton's advantage because he's got his head turned around. Brock Heward just going to do the three-step, lob it. And uh, you can see that's not a very pretty football throw, but. Nice adjustment, though, by Payton to come back. From their own 49, Dillon into Cougar territory, and he's dragged down from behind. Dorian Boos making the stop. At the 45, the ball will be spotted. So it'll be second down and four for the Huskies. Cougars almost guilty of over pursuing. Dorian Boos has to come back and, and club <laughs> Corey <laughs> Dillon with that big right hand cast he's got, just enough to trip him up with the Fred Flintstone like club. <laughs> Dillon over the century mark now, 102 yards, 28 carries. Second down and four from the 45 of Washington State. Play fake. And that ball's incomplete. That one intended for Gerald Harris, the freshman out of Kent Meridian High School. Not much room to operate in over here. By the time he came out of his route, he only had a few steps before he was out of bounds. Brock tried to unload it very quickly, but not enough space. Well, that brings him up to third down four. Trying to question that last call. Cougars actually come in with a 5-DB package, think and pass here. Johnny Nansen comes out as a linebacker. He were going to change the play at the line of scrimmage. Cougars bounce around a little bit, down to four seconds on the play clock. He will throw. Has time, guns it out, and it is incomplete. Shad Hinchin with the coverage. Looked for a moment like Fred Coleman was going to be able to make the catch, but Hinchin able to jar it loose. Again, uh, kind of question the play call in there. Sunny second down, you get six, and then you take two shots at throwing the ball when, when Corey Dillon's been rumbling very effectively. Uh, 
little pressure on Brock there. Long throw didn't quite get there at the right timing, and the Cougs, I think, happy to come away with that series of downs. Ahmed Sarshar set to punt it away. You'll get a good perspective of his as he gets the low snap, kicks it high. Timms calls for the fair catch at the 10. So the Cougars will have the football at their own 10, and we'll see if they can generate any offense in the second half. You're watching the Apple Cup on Fox Sports Northwest. Thirteen minutes exactly to play in the third quarter. And the Cougars will have the football on their own ten. And Cleet, what adjustments do you feel have been made by the Cougar offense? Well, I think it's one of uh, coaches yelling at him and trying to get some intensity. And they fumble the football and flags fly. Ryan Leaf recovers it. He never had the snap. He's down back at the five. They'll spot it at the six. And let's see what the flags have to say. Well, you're going to have a false start there, the, the left side. And Ryan gets rolled over on his ankle. So that's not good. Uh, how's that for a start for the second yeah. half? <laughs> you called it perfectly, Cleet. Uh, yeah. <laughs> let's have some execution and intensity. You jump offside and you roll over your quarterback's <laughs> ankle. Before the snap, false start, offense, half the distance to the goal, till first down. Husky seventh play. penalty, sorry, seventh penalty of the game against the Cougars. Husky fans are down in the Husky end of the end zone, and the players are really getting them upset, or excuse me, excited. That's not a misprint on your screen. Three completions, no yards. Two of those completions went for negative yardage. And now the Cougars face a first and 15. Leaf will throw from his own end zone. Throws it deep for Carpenter, and it is batted away. Nice defensive play. Now a late flag thrown in. Boy, I thought Mel Miller had done a nice job there. He must have put the right hand on the shoulder pad to get up and bat it away. Otherwise, it looked like he was in perfect coverage. Let's take a look. Ryan Leaf just uh, kind of hanging around his own end zone. Yeah, I got a couple Huskies battling around in front of me. But I'm going to go ahead and throw it long just before I get creamed by Wiggs. That's, that's great composure. Here's Miller going over the top. You can see that uh, the right hand was. 15 yards to the previous spot. Automatic first down. Giving him a little assist, so. The officials finally get one right. Well, they got him out to the 20 yard line since the Cougars haven't been able to do it themselves today. <laughs> Ouch. That's All the right. second Cougar first down. Both have come <laughs> via the penalty. The tally mark goes on Sonny's side of the board there. First and 10 from the 20. But Washington in motion for the Cougs. Black on first down. Breaks a tackle. Has some running room. And Black. Very close to a first down gain for Washington State and was one tackle away from going the distance. Washington State has the exact right call here. As you see, Jensen is way outside. He's going to take the outside contain. He misses the tackle. McIndoo just gets enough of him to kick him out. Parrish actually does a very nice job in the open field of, of making a one on one tackle. Michael Black will tell you that he wants to beat that one on one guy every time. Cougar defense getting a little rest, and finally the Cougar offense generates a first down without the benefit of a penalty. So first down from the 30 for Washington State, two tight ends. Huskies really bunched up on the line of scrimmage, and Leaf goes to the audible. Short drop, quick toss, and the ball batted down. Ryan Leaf checks out of the run, tries to get a quick little hitch, and uh, Chork just puts the big mid up there as Husky Paw. <laughs> Knocks it down. Good play that time. Already named an All-American by the Football News. One on each side of the ball for the Huskies, bud. You've got uh, Benji Olsen on the other side. Corey Dillon, a second-teamer. 
Brewer defense talking things over. Linebacking core. Man to man's got to be a blitz. Cougars lost the football again. Huskies have it. Second time in the half, the Cougars have had problems with the exchange. That's the first turnover of the game by Washington State. Well, the execution is uh, flawed once again. Ryan backs out of there, and, and you can tell that he doesn't ever have the football. And that gives the Huskies excellent field position just outside the 30-yard line of the Washington State. Ikaliaga in there diving on the boat. Watch as, as Ryan comes out here. He never gets that ball at all. Just scoots off, actually, the, the thigh. Corey Withrow anxious to make a block. Sometimes that ball is cold. It affects the center's ability to handle it. And Ink just has a clear avenue. Jumps right on it. Well, that's why we always talk about the quarterback, the receivers, the running backs. And it's that center that we got to watch. Well, first and 10, Huskies at the 28. They'll give it to Dillon. And Dillon rambles his way down to about the 19-yard line. Derek Henderson, 20 for the Cougs. Definitely felt that hit from big Corey Dillon. Corey's wearing the baggy underneath. It looks like a seasoned veteran out of Franklin. He knows what this Northwest weather is all about. Pretty impressive string. He's put together six straight 100-yard games. Dillon has some running room. Dillon inside the five to the one yard line. Corey Dillon, period. And big Leon Bender is down and hurt for the Cougars. I want to see how long the fingers are of the guy that tried to bring Corey Dillon down, hanging on for dear life to keep him out of the end zone. Washington State has been very successful all afternoon, guessing uh, to the side that Corey Dillon's going to run, but you see. Both Bender and Darling down in the middle, running to the weak side of the formation, down to the half yard line is big number four. Huskies taking advantage of the turnover. Corey Dillon wasn't wearing the old hand warmer on the back of his backside there. He would have been in the end zone. Good job of blocking up here, Cleet. You just can't do it better than that. 11.25 to go, third quarter. Huskies lead it by 10. They're knocking on the door. They're watching the Apple Cup on Fox Sports Northwest. Hey, you can see Leon Bender being helped off the field, and the Cougars already thin at that defensive tackle position. And they lose another warrior there. And the Huskies with the ball that far from Pater and Corey Dillon trying to tack on yet another touchdown, add to his record. Well, I guess you're going to get an offside penalty. <laughs> you're not going to give up much yardage there. James Darling diving <laughs> over the top. Timing is everything. James I'm, a little <laughs> embarrassed with this one, though, as, as he staff starts. Here I go! <laughs> you forgot to snap it, Brock. Before the snap, offside, defense, There's half the distance to the goal, still first down. He's trying to argue right there that he was drawn offside. <laughs> yeah. There's a head bob by, uh, by Heward over there that brought me up in the air five feet. Not enough room to get half distance to the goal. That was about a three-inch penalty. Cooks have to hope for a snap problem on the Husky side. Dillon, touchdown, Washington. Yeah, he was definitely in. Now, I don't know why the call came so late. His progress was definitely into the end zone, and the Huskies have a 16 to nothing lead now. Huskies taking advantage of the gift that Cougar offense gave to him. 
short porch, and here's an even shorter one. Nothing real pretty again. Here's just another one of Corey Dillon's ugly carries <laughs> for six. Very productive carry. I don't know why that call took so long, though. I mean, you see from that side, that angle right there, he's in by a yard or two. Shane Fortney to hold again a low snap. Fortney gets it down and Wales boots it through. So it's 17 to nothing Huskies now as the Huskies go 28 yards in four plays. Corey Dillon with his effort today, 130 yards on the ground. He's passed a couple of pretty well-known fellows in the Pac-10 rushing records. O.J. Simpson, Ricky Bell, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Mike Garrett, and now Chuck Muncy. So now Dillon eighth in rushing in the Pac-10 records and he's 33 yards away from Marcus Allen. Pretty fair company. One touchdown away from tying O.J. Simpson also and uh, Marcus Allen for the touchdown rushing lead. Well, Washington State now needs to, number one, get a decent return put together. And number two, somebody on that offensive football team has got to grab the rest of the huddle. Scott Sanderson, David Knuff, these seniors have got to do something to shake up this offensive football team and, and get somebody to make a big play. Otherwise, uh, it's going to be a very, very cold evening here for the offensive side of the football and the Cougars. Need to shake it up. Cougars have the longest scoring streak in Pac-10 games right now at 163. Cougars have scored in 142 consecutive games overall. And that in jeopardy now as they trail 17 to nothing. Again, that short kick, and again, Tims will have a chance to return it, this time from the 24. And this time he won't get anything as he is wrapped up and brought down. <laughs> Lester Towns again. He's not going to outrun Lester Towns in that deal. Corey Dillon taking a little break on the sidelines. A lot of speculation as to whether Mr. Dillon will rejoin the Huskies next year. Yeah, it's a lot of talk going on in Seattle. Uh, all over the state, uh, Husky fans are wondering about him. Rashawn Sheehy certainly will be back next year. If that's the case, you've got two guys that are going to say, give me the ball. We'll see how that works out. First down, handoff to Michael Black, trying to bounce it outside. He is able to pick up a couple of yards and brought down at about the 29-yard line. Jerry Jensen holding his ground. Cook's trying to find some combination to set up the next play. Michael Black, 11 carries, officially 32 yards. Still a lot of time left, but the Cougars need to generate something here. Get something going on the scoreboard, sustain a drive, something they have not done all day. Straight man free. Huskies come up and challenge the wide receivers and bring everybody else. Here's the pressure. Leaf goes down. Fumble. Who's got the ball? Huskies say they've got it. Looked like David Ritchie. Ball popped right into his arms, just standing there. Number 46, Jason First sack of the day goes to Jason Chorak and the fumble recovery to the Huskies and the Dogs threatening to blow it open now. It's really tough for a quarterback lead. I know you've been there as well to have eyes in the back of your head. Jason Chorak coming in, and, and you're right, very uh, fortunate a bounce there to David Ritchie. But we haven't really mentioned Jason Chorak as a sack today, but uh, he's been near Ryan Leaf all afternoon. But Ryan uh, looking for something to happen downfield, and you got to credit the young Husky corners for really matching up and, and not allow anything to shake loose early. Richie's saying, yeah, do that some more. Next time I'll run with it when I'm not so surprised. Boy, the Cougar defense back out on the field again. Play fake to Dillon. Heward into the end zone for Dillon, and it's knocked away. James Darling, how's that for coverage for a linebacker? Running with Corey. Out. No, 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 no. Get out of my office. <laughs> Let's go down to the sidelines to Lance Jacob. But injury update for Leon Bender. He re-injured the right ankle. It looks much worse this time. Mark Maha, the head of athletic medicine for Washington State, said he may not return. It looks doubtful. Back upstairs. All righty, Lance, thank you. Do you have to ice an ankle on a day like today? Uh, he wouldn't get me to it. <laughs> he probably wouldn't feel it. Second and 10 now from the 24 for the Dogs. 
This is Terry Holloman who's in the backfield, and his carry gets down to about the 21-yard line. Junior out of Cascade High School in Everett is younger brother Tory Holloman, a redshirt freshman defensive back for the Cougars. Terry got a chance to play quite a bit against San Jose State, as everybody did last week, and had 148 yards rushing. Well, there was three backs that went over 100 yards, and Terry Holloman has really worked himself back into getting some PT. You know, he's been down on the depth chart. It takes some time, and he's really worked hard, and, and the coaches have responded and uh, given him some playing time. Third down, and call it seven now for the Dogs from the 21. Holloman remains in the backfield, trips to the left for Heward. Play fake. Here comes a little pressure. Hewitt rolls away from it and has the first down. Fred Coleman makes the catch at the 10, and the Husky receivers are hanging on to the football. Early on, the Cougar receivers didn't do it, and that has been a factor in this game. Again, a very nice throw on the run from Brock Hewitt, and Mr. Krutz, Owen Krutz, number 77, is out to get another block on a guy coming up just on the left-hand side there. Nice catch by Fred Coleman. It's good to see the young man come through with a nice grab today. Brock Heward very comfortable rolling to his left, his good side, and uh, has shown that he can throw the ball on the money. First down and goal for the Huskies from the 10. They cannot get a first down. Dillon back in the backfield. Dillon running room inside the five, and took about three Cougars to wrap him up finally. Smaller linebackers. Uh, Getting worn down here by this big offensive line and uh, then followed up with 225 pounds of number four there. It's, after a while, it gets real old. Yes, it does, but Brandon Moore's doing the right thing. He's going low, and he's made several tackles today right around the ankles. Which is where I'd be. <laughs> I'd be laying down having him trip over me. <laughs> Second and goal from the five. Dylan again. Touchdown, Washington. I believe that ties him, bud, right there. O.J. Simpson, Marcus Allen, o. Corey Dillon now with 22. This one looks pretty easy here, Cleet. Well, Leon Bender's out of there. You got a 300-pound body that's awful hard to replace, and James Darling not able to scrape off, get back uh, the cutback, actually, uh, by Dillon there is a, a good little move, and he's in the end zone someplace he's uh, fairly familiar with this year. And Dillon has just set the Pac-10 single-season scoring record. He hasn't broken the TD record yet because he has one touchdown reception. That's why he's broken the scoring record. 24 to nothing, dogs. You're watching the Apple Cup on Fox Sports Northwest. Well, the Husky fans have a lot to cheer about right now. 24 to nothing. The Huskies leading the Cougars, and the question becomes, can the Cougars generate something offensively and avoid the shutout? John Wales been a busy man kicking off today. Here you see a nice little cut bat and good block in there by Olin Kreutz on uh, James Darling. Just got enough of him again. Allow Corey Dillon to slice and dice his way through there for a fairly sizable afternoon again for him. Wales kicks it a little deeper this time, and it will be Diane Taylor who gets it out to about the 32 yard line for Washington State. Played at this stage, the Cougars have to abandon the running game. Well, I think so. I think you, you know, almost have to go back into the shotgun and uh, and and hurry up offense to try to get some intensity, some activity out of this offensive group, and maybe shake up what the Huskies are doing. And uh, I'd almost go into the two-minute drill right now. Cougars will give it to Michael Black, and he will be met by Ink Aliaga. Gain of about two yards on the play. Michael Black, the ball carrier. Inks having a big day. Been involved in a couple plays uh, downfield and also at the line of scrimmage. 
see his career numbers. Seems like he's been there for <laughs> more than four years. Isn't that true? Some players seem like just, just seem like he's been there forever. <laughs> Second and eight. Cougars give it to Black again. And nothing doing at all this time. Trying to spring something. Uh, Huskies coming up field awful hard, trying to kick out that end. And, uh, not surprising the Huskies one bit. As they're able to play effectively with eight men on the line of scrimmage and just taking those corners and playing man-to-man -man all day long. And uh, the Cougars not showing much interest in, in trying to go to the air and, and hurry things up. One guy we haven't talked about a lot, David Knuff. Thought he might be a little more involved in the offense. Not on the field now. Four wide receivers, black in the backfield, out of the shotgun. Leaf gets rid of the ball. We got a penalty flag being thrown. It's gonna be pass interference one way or the other. May be a pick on the Cougars as they do that little crossing route that Sean McWashington may be called of uh, going out and setting the screen. That's what I kind of thought was going to happen there. Officials discussing things and saying, uh, how are you going to get home tonight? Holding. Well, goes the other way. So much for what you guys thought, huh? A yeah, little bit well, of holding. <laughs> on, I, I, I couldn't <laughs> see his etch a sketch from up here. <laughs> so uh, the penalty once again comes in at a timely moment for Washington State, and that's been the third penalty for a first down, and, and that's been about it today. Holding. Defense, 10 yards from the previous spot, automatic first down. So they'll march it out to the 45 yard line. I don't know about you, Sonny, but the shotgun for me so Ryan Leaf can take a look at what's going on. Well, that last play, he wasn't close on the pass either. It's because the receiver was held, though, Sonny. First and 10 Cougs. <laughs> Leaf going deep for Carpenter, and Carpenter makes a catch. Was he inbounds? I'll say yes, he got a foot down at the 29. Chad Carpenter, his first catch of the day. 104th of his career. That kid's very athletic, and you could tell on that play, Cleet, that it's a great catch by him. Well, they needed somebody to make a play here to get some interest in this football game, and this time, Ryan has the time and the room to step up. You see that Chad has bought himself a little bit of real estate there, runs his pattern up near the sidelines and bends it out. Nice throw and catch that time. Good job of staying on the numbers that time by Carpenter. Cougars go to the two tight end alignment now. First down at the Husky 29. Delayed handoff to Black. He's got Sanderson leading the way. Black, hogtied, brought down by Lester Towns. Towns a big rangy guy, 6'3", 240, and Sonny, if he grows anymore, we'll see him on the defensive line or in a Jason Chorak type position, I'd imagine. No, he's, uh, I think that Lester Towns is a made for middle linebacker. Okay. Showed pretty good speed. <laughs> uh, running down Michael Black from inside out there and need to give up that speed down in a down position. Gain of five for Black. It'll be second and five from the 24. And the Cougars have yet another first down on the game by Black. Interesting bit there, uh, Ryan Leaf comes up and, and goes on the first, first count and stops the Huskies from jumping around on that defensive line, actually caught him just making an adjustment. So uh, Ryan doing a little thinking out there. Crowd comes to life a little bit as the Cougars show a little sign of life on the offensive side of the ball. First and 10 from the 16 now. Corners. Two tight ends. Corners for the Huskies just challenging. Black has a little running room. Gets down to the 10 yard line. They'll spot it at the nine. You certainly can see where Michael Black is number two in the league in rushing. There's a lot of fight left in this young man today, Cleet. He's not giving up at all. He's running very hard. Delay. Incaliaga overruns it just a bit. And, uh, Mike shows move those feet, trying to get in that end zone. Again, he's been a performer here. Washington, number one. We just said timeout Washington, but pointed in the Cougar direction. I'm assuming 
It is a Husky timeout, however, as they bring the defense over to huddle. We'll take a break, 5.13 to go, third quarter. All Huskies so far, but the Cougars with a chance to change that. You're watching the Apple Cup on Fox Sports Northwest. Huskies leading the Cougars in this 89th Apple Cup, but Washington State with a second down and three from the nine. There's a good look. The Cougars with just 24 yards until this drive. They've picked up 47 yards. A lot of it by Michael Black. One big pass from Ryan Leaf to Chad Carpenter. Cougars might have jumped, and now that do <laughs> blow the whistle now. <laughs> this uh, little ping pong ball coming out of that. Rock Heward uh, staying loose. He's not one to accept this is already one for the books. Washington State uh, just been inconsistent all Before night. The snap, false start, offense. Five yards from the previous spot, and it's still second down. Look like the other tight end in the game, Jefferson. Just jumped a little bit. Mike Price back with the headset on now. Maybe going to get a little more involved in the play calling. Uh, interesting that he wasn't wearing that headset in the first half. Trying to change things up a little bit, maybe. So second and eight from the 14. As the Huskies bounce around, Leaf pump fake into the corner for Carpenter, and he can't make the catch. Well, I don't like that. A fan just threw a can out towards the official in the far corner. Not real happy with the call. Here's the post corner trying to sell the quick post. And uh, Smith looks like there's a little bit of contact, but no, that's, that's pretty good defense right there. Ball wasn't thrown very well for Chad, and, and his angle and where Ryan thought he was going to were two different. Had to turn three times that time. And, just not able to get there. So third down, call it eight. Worst day of Ryan Leaf's young Cougar career after a lot of hope for his performance against the Huskies last year. The Carpenter, and it's going to be a little shy of the first down, I think. Let's see where the spot is. Chad's a little upset with himself because he was thinking touchdown. He didn't get in there for the, the first down. They're going to probably measure this one right down near the uh, six and a half yard line is where they're going to spot this. So it's going to be real close. Huskies coming on the blitz. That time, that's probably one of the finest passes Ryan Leaf has thrown this afternoon, right on the money to Chad Carpenter. There's Fiala right in his face. He knows that that little window is open. You can see that uh, Chad starts to send or starts to slip sideways. This will be a half a yard short there. So obviously, Washington State's going to go for this. Field goal doesn't do him a whole lot. Well, I don't know. It's only uh, five minutes to go in the third quarter. Do you want to do something positive for the offense of the Cougars? Not, you got to go for it. Cougars need about a half a yard on fourth down. Got to believe they're going to go the left side of the football. McIndoo, Sanderson, Knuff, the three seniors. They give it to Gilmore with Black leading, and it's a first down, Washington State. The true freshman, Dewan Gilmore, gets the first down. Number 37, Dewan Gilmore. I know one thing, they went towards Scott Sanderson's side. <laughs> That's a pretty, pretty good call. Yeah, no, it, it, finally the Cougs are able to execute like uh, when they need to. Third down and eight, they pick it up. Big Scott, key block there, just enough. Had a fine career here, hasn't he, Cleve? He's a great one. He's got a few more downs left him in uh, the next league. To Black on first down, and he'll fight and try to get back to the line of scrimmage. And it looks like he'll lose about a half yard on the spot. David Ritchie 
down the bottom of that pile. He's uh, happy to be here for the second half because last year he got his bell rung pretty good. Wasn't able to play in this football game in the Apple Cup last year, at least not in the second half. Didn't know where he was. Ryan Leaf ran for a couple of touchdowns against the Huskies last year. Huskies showing blitz right up the middle to inside linebackers. Aliaga and Fiala right to Brian's face. Leaf the drop, throws it in the corner. It is caught. They'll say incomplete. Caught out of bounds by Chris Jackson. Good coverage that time. Jermaine Smith out there with Jackson, 81. Just about a half a foot too far. Well, the, the Huskies able to convince Ryan to check out and go into that quick out and just the timing has not been there all day long. What was that, Ryan Leaf signaling back to the sidelines of the play he was? Well, uh, th th yeah, that, that might be, uh, I'd like to do play action and run waggle and maybe get outside of this pocket. Third down and goal from the six. The fake, Leaf looking for his man, gonna run away from a little bit of pressure, guns in and it is incomplete. Throw it into traffic. Fourth down, and they will be Tony the toe on here. A little surprised they don't take another shot at six, but Mike Price wants to get something on the board here. A lot of time, Ryan Leaf uh, with the big fake. Huskies just out there playing, looking for a pass. Nice job by Rainville just to keep on going here as, as Chorak doesn't quit, trying to find uh, Chad Carpenter in the back of the end zone, and uh, that was what we call a force. Just no chance. 23-yard attempt by Tony, the tr the toe truant. And Eline drives it through, and the Cougars avoid the shutout anyway as they get the field goal. It's 24-3 to in favor of the Huskies. Three and a half minutes to play. Third quarter, you're watching the Apple Cup on Fox Sports Northwest. Twenty-four to three, the Huskies with the lead over the Cougars, with three and a half minutes to play in the Apple Cup. The Husky faithful in the end zone are sticking around for this one. They want to stay till the end of this. Won't be a bitter end for the Huskies the way things are going right now. A lot of time. Tony Truant to kick it off. He will kick into the wind. Jarzinski, Jarzinka rather, at the 25, got a big block, and he's still on his feet out near the 40-yard line. Little dig by the Cougars to come out and do their own pooch kick, huh? We'll show you. Good return by Joe, getting some good yardage out of that, much like the Cougars did earlier in the game. Joe suffered through the heat of summer camp with that long hair and everybody's probably giving him a bad time of it back in <laughs> August, but now they're all thinking, you know that Joe, he's, 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 he's a pretty smart guy. He's a pretty smart guy. Some of the Cougar faithful still smiling. Dylan gets a couple on first down. David Evans in there underneath the pile, along with Brandon Moore. David Evans in there now for uh, big number 91, Leon Bender, who's on the sidelines, sore ankle. The gendarmes escorting a Cougar and a Husky out who decided to settle their difference of opinion with <laughs> a little Holyfield Tyson action <laughs> in the stands. Ah, yes. So it was a draw. Second and eight for the dogs. They'll give it to Mr. Dillon again. He bounces off one tackle and 
He'll pick up maybe a yard on that play as well. It'll be third and long for the Huskies. The Huskies need to make sure they don't get too content here and uh, assume that they can just run out the clock by banging away three and out. Although they haven't executed today, this Cougar offense can score and has the, the weapons. I think in the Pac-10, you can't afford to write anybody off. Well, eight for 12 today. This will be a little bit of a tougher one. It'll be third and a long six. Dylan will go out of the backfield. Heward will drop back and throw. Good protection. Now here comes the pressure. Gets it to Jeremy Brigham, and they'll lose yardage. Jeremy Brigham's only catch last year was against Washington State. He gets one this year, but for a loss. One of the, Those are the kind of plays that you can use maybe once during a ball game, but we, the Huskies have tried it three times now, once it was incomplete, and that play well read by the Cougars. Loss of four. It'll be fourth and ten. Now they move it back a little further, so loss of six. It'll be fourth and twelve. Sarshar's gotten him off in time. I'm going to see if the Cougs try to come after this one and get a block. Good kick. Timms fumbles the football. A race for it. Can Timms cover it? He does. Didn't get control of it, but he knocked it out of bounds. Sean Timms has been pretty sure-handed as a punt returner. That's the first time he's had a problem. First time the punt is actually coming down in the spiral. It's kind of a weird looking punt. You might be able to see it. Came down the long way and just misjudged it. And there's the scholarship on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's amazing how quickly you run after fumbled punts. That, well, you that, asked about Corey. Now, will Tim's be back next year? Yeah. <laughs> Under a full moon. Still waiting for that snow we were promised. Hasn't shown up. Cougs with the ball. 15-yard line. Chorak and Richie jumping around on the defensive line for the dogs. Delay handoff to Black, and he's going to lose a couple of yards. The Huskies doing a nice job to smother Michael Black in the backfield. Again, Jason Chorak getting penetration across the offensive line, disrupting the play from the beginning. Adding to his tackles for loss totals. Had that one read from the get-go. Loss of four for Black on that one. It's second and 14 from the 12. Black, 18 carries for 50 yards. 25 seconds left in the third quarter. Husky showing blitz, then calling it off. Burton waves it off. Leaf has time, good protection. Wants to throw it deep, trying for Jackson, and it is incomplete. Mel Miller came over the top. The Cougar fans wanted interference, but the officials say no. And Bell Miller says no. <laughs> well, it was a good play. It was very close, obviously, from that angle that we have. Ryan Leaf decides he's just going to throw a punt up there, and uh, whoever is the best athlete is going to come get this. Looks like Chris is open for a while, and now he's waiting, waiting, waiting for that ball. And Miller, uh, a little bit of contact, but uh, that's pretty, pretty tough call to flag him on that one. Jason Chorak was complaining that he was being held. He was showing the official his shoulder pad that was outside of his uniform. And he said, I didn't do that. 11 seconds left in the third quarter, third and 14 for the Cougars. Leaf guns it, and it's incomplete. Kevin McKenzie trying to make a one-handed catch on a ball that was thrown in front of him. Chris Campbell with some pressure. Not much of an offensive series, and Ryan Leaf is going to jog back off the field after three and out in that kind of day. Husky should get pretty good field position out of this. Uh, Jeff Banks, don't think he's going to fake this one. Mm, I don't think so. He'll catch the snap a couple yards deep in his own end zone. Kind of gets it off the side of his foot and Jarzinka comes up, makes the running catch and breaks a tackle or two and the Huskies will have great field position at about the 36 yard line of Washington State. That's the end of the third quarter. The Huskies leading the Cougars 24 to three. You're watching the Apple Cup on Fox Sports Northwest.
24 to three in favor of the Huskies as we begin the final 15 minutes of football in Apple Cup 96. It'll be Husky football from the Cougar 36. Corey Dillon still in the backfield. Ready to continue his long afternoon. 35 carries for 144 yards already. Dillon will pick up a couple on that carry. See who got the tackle in there. They actually ran Corey down from behind. Mike Price trying to get some effort. Some Man, more effort. Look uh, at that time of possession, Cleet. Absolutely dominated by Lambeau's side of the ball. Second and eight for the Huskies. Coleman and Paith on the wide receivers. Dylan, the delayed handoff and the dive play <laughs> gives new meaning to that. Well, he's, he's getting tired of the defenders grabbing at his ankles. He's going to dive for three yards. He's going to have a horizontal <laughs> plane of about three feet off the ground. And he took a pretty good shot there. Maybe he's happy with uh, taking it to the sidelines, holding his right arm. I got a little stinger there as he and Henderson collided about, uh, like I said, uh, six, seven yards downfield. Another nice pickup, though, by Corey. Third and two from the 28. Steve Gleason in at a linebacker. He's another light linebacker. Huskies just lining up two tight ends and banging away. Terry Holloman in the backfield now for the dogs. And he has the first down and James Darling finally able to bring him down from behind. But it'll be a first down for the dogs at about the 15. And there's, it looks like a little bit of a cramp for Corey Dillon. Well, it's an example right there. Corey Dillon, the big bruising tailback. You get a guy like Terry Holloman in there, much like the Steve Broussard that the Cougars had a few years ago, hitting the hole a little bit quicker than Corey has in the second half. Throwing a change up to James Darling. He's all braced with his neck all bulled up, ready to, <laughs> ready to take and on the, Corey. And here and comes the flyback going right by him. Three wide receivers in this set for the Huskies. Holloman in the backfield. He spins away from a tackler, loses his balance at about the 12-yard line. Huskies just continuing to chew up time. Holloman's brother, a cougar. Love to get a chance to go in and probably knock heads. Brock Ewart, just quiet, confident, leading the team down the field all day long. It's always kind of fun just to turn around, hand the ball off, and watch all these big guys go at it. Especially when you're in top 24 to three. Cougs jumping off, no flag thrown. Holloman to about the 10, maybe the nine yard line, and the big guy's still banging away. And Holloman says, let me get out of the way. <laughs> Those little legs are pile drivers. The guy's uh, got very strong thighs. Olin Krutz has had a good day. 77 to center for the Huskies. Been out blocking uh, some of the rollout action of Brock Hewer today and having to put up with those big fellas up front of the Cougars all day also. Holloman credited with Getting down to the eight yard line, sets up a third and three from the eight now. 11 and a half minutes left in the football game. Huskies lead it 24 to three. A little too much time, I believe. Well, Playcock's already been reset to 25, so I don't know if it's a delay or if one of the Huskies moved too quickly. Before the snap, false start, offense, five yards from the previous spot, still third down. So third and eight now from about the 13 yard line. Brock Heward, a little different leadership style than Ryan Leaf. He's one that is uh, 
one to just take everything in stride and, and have a demeanor of, uh, I don't get rattled, I don't get excited. Ryan Leaf, on the other hand, a little more emotional, up and down. Been a little bit down today. Cougars show blitz. Here they come. Heward actually has a man blocked into him. We got a flag thrown. First sack for the Cougars. I believe it's going to be a hold. You see it on the left hand side. Finally, don't buy on the fake, and uh, Darzinka going to throw a crushing block. <laughs> <laughs> Take made that! The <laughs> Take that and that! He was trying. Shane Doyle just uh, shrugs him off and goes and gets Damon Hewitt for big loss. So that'll take him back to about the... Illegal block in the back. Offense. That penalty's refused. Fourth down. So they'll spot the ball where Hewitt was tackled. That'll bring on field goal. Wales will attempt one. That's what those little penalties will do for you, Cleet. Little motion penalty or the jumping off sides that the Cougars were doing earlier in the game and totally changes your game, your play calling. That's okay with John Wales, though. He gets a chance to kick another field goal. Maybe block another one, run it back the other way. This will be a 37-yard attempt out of the hold of Shane Fortney. I got a little confusion by the officials. They say the Cougars are going to take time out. So the Cougars are going to ice John Wales? I don't think yeah, so. I don't get Had it. the wrong <laughs> personnel in. 11.05 to go in the game. 21-point Husky lead. They're watching the Apple Cup on Fox Sports Northwest. Huskies will try the field goal, 37-yard attempt, just inside the left hash. Good snap. Pushed it a little to the right. So the Cougars will take over at the 20. With 11 minutes left in the football game. That's the right calf, Corey Dillon, if anybody deserves to have a Tired, sore leg. Yeah, say, <laughs> it's this guy. He's. I don't blame him for cramping up on a cold day like this with all the carries he's had this afternoon. Ryan Leaf back on for the Cougars. He's going to go with two tight ends here. <laughs> uh, doesn't make too much sense, but they're going to try and get it done. Michael Black, maybe. Play yeah. fake to Black. Leaf going to try to throw it deep and just had the ball come out of his hand. Leaf, I think, has covered it. That was a that was a Dave Craig job. I was going to say soap dish. <laughs> Unfortunately, Ryan is just not able to let this one fly. Play action. He's got Sean McWashington way downfield, but this whoops, I forgot the last part of that throw, and he's lucky to jump right back on. It's been that kind of day for Ryan. Just nothing is has come open when he's thrown the ball well, and uh, then things like this pop up. Well, that's something you and I were talking about during the timeout, though, Cleet. He kind of slingshots it out, lays it out, instead of really pumping that ball. Work for the summer. Here comes the pressure. Leaf runs away from it as a man wide open, and he threw it too, haul, too tall for Sean Timms. Well, you can't blame that one on Ryan that looked like uh, Sean had kind of turned around without con continuing to run his route. Ryan's got a guy in his face with a big purple helmet on, and he just got to try to get rid of that thing. And again, just hasn't clicked this afternoon. Lester Towns will come off. Ink Aliaga back in for the dogs at linebacker. Third and 20 from the 10 for the Cougars. 
something tells me Lester may have been, uh, should have been out in coverage <laughs> on that play. Huskies look a little confused. Leaf going deep, has a man open. It's Tim's again. This time they hook up. First down, Cougars into Husky territory at the 43. Run the wheel route. Sims out of his slot position in the four wide receiver set. He's gonna go out like he's running the, the flat route. Ryan pumps it. Huskies bite young corners. And this time the ball's thrown perfectly. Look again like they had the mismatch with Fiala covering Tim's. Rob Rainville, 79 for the Cougars, doing a good job on Jason Chorak, not letting him get to Ryan Leaf. First down, Cougars at the 43 of the Huskies. Michael Black, a hard-earned couple of yards there. Ink Aliaga on the tackle. Honolulu Michael beats Michael Los Angeles. Good job by Michael Black. John Fiala was in position to stop him for no gain. And he was able to get away and gain a few yards. Black now, 19 carries, 53 yards on the day. Cougars out of this set like to go play action. Just a straight drop. Leaf being pressured, throws it up. It is McKenzie, makes the catch, and he'll go down at about the three-yard line. He beat Nigel Burton, and the Cougars will have it first and goal. And Jerry Jensen is down, injured at the midfield stripe. Well, Ryan Leaf, just as we think all the wheels have come off, uh, puts the car back together and puts together two nice throws. This time does an excellent job of just buying some time as he slides to his left. You see him just, just buying two or three seconds, and that allows the post corner to develop. McKenzie, recipient of a well-thrown ball that time. Well, it's one thing, too, the Huskies knowing that they have to throw the ball to really get back in the ball game, and they're still blitzing people. Maybe it's a time to hang back and uh, play the soft zone and make him beat you throwing accurate passes. That was a very nice throw and good catch. Leaf now 7 of 23 for 118 yards. Cougars first and goal from the two. Gilmore and Black in the backfield for Washington State. Play. Leaf naked bootleg touchdown Washington State. Well, there's a little wrinkle that, <laughs> that the Huskies probably weren't expecting, and the Cougars just dying to use it all game, but never in a position down close earlier in the football game. But this is flawless right here. Ryan Leaf sells it, and you can tell the Husky, I think it was Aliaga there on the end of the line of scrimmage, uh, lost containment, and uh, Ryan will just go hand it to the side judge and say, let's go kick the extra point. Those are the kind that you and I could run in. Used to be, I'd probably pull up lame. <laughs> Truitt adds the extra point. And it's 24 to 10 Huskies. The Cougars with a little life with 8.50 to go in the game. You're watching the Apple Cup on Fox Sports Northwest. Tony Truant will kick it off for Washington State. The Cougars with an 80-yard drive, and they actually ended up going 90 yards after the first play when Ryan Leaf did the uh, Statue of Liberty, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. But redeemed himself with a couple of big passes to Sean Timms and Kevin McKenzie. And then the two-yard touchdown run for Leaf, who had a couple of rushing touchdowns against the Huskies in Seattle. The official did a nice job. Notice his form on accepting <laughs> that handoff. Not his first, first handoff. Well, Ryan Leaf back in uh, the Cougar sidelines, hoping his defense can maybe get a turnover for him here. Let's see if Trun will kick it deep. He will with the wind and sends it into the end zone. So the Huskies will start at the 20. Be interesting to see if Corey Dillon comes back or if he's done for the day. 
Looks like Terry Holloman's going to be going in. Well, if possible, Coach Doba, his defensive group that actually, you know, in all fairness, have played very well. The, the two touchdowns here the second half were set up by turnovers uh, that, that they performed admirably, even though 24 points is uh, showing up against them. Huskies came in averaging 34 points a game. Leon Bender back in the game there. Uh, right ankle must have got taped up. Holloman will pick up about five, just keeps driving and ends up making it about a seven yard game. Nice job by the junior out of Cascade High School in Everett. Leon Bender uh, with the score getting a little closer, gets a little healthier. <laughs> oh, I'm okay, I'm okay. Feels much better, coach. You know, what's really evident to me here as we watch the, the new tailback Holloman is that maybe it doesn't matter who is at that tailback position that you might have had a uh, Pac-10 leading rusher, whether it's Sheehy, Holloman, Dillon, they're big guys up front are doing the job. Huskies 206 yards rushing, they came in averaging 220 a game. James Darling says not this time to Mr. Holloman, no gain. James Darling's won his fair share of the skirmishes here. He's had an outstanding football game. Talk about guys that have been there forever. You see the Cougars jumping offside, but still able to play off the double team, having a pact on that play. We talked about that earlier, the big guys in front having to occupy one or two guys so James Darling can run around and, and make those kind of tackles. Here's a big play right here, third and three. See if the Huskies have enough confidence in that running game to put it on the ground again. They will, and they will not pick up the first down. The Cougar defensive line stiffens when it has to, and the Huskies will have to punt it away. Let's go down to the sidelines to Lance Jacob. Hey, bud, you guys may have hit on something. Leon Bender, it looked like his day was done. Brian Lee scored a touchdown, the game tightened up. He jumped off the bench and said, let's go get him back up there. <laughs> There's Big Leon giving a hug to Big Shane Doyle in there. They just absolutely stuffed the entire offensive line into about a three-yard area. No place for Holloman to go, and that's a good job by the defense there. Cougars should have pretty good field position if Sean Timms is able to handle this punt from Sarshar. High snap. Sarshar gets it away. It's a short kick. Timms will come up and tells everybody to get out of the way. The Huskies end up getting a decent bounce out of it. Good job by Sarshar to come down with the grab. Almost got lobbed over his head. 6.26 to go in the game. Huskies by 14. You're watching the Apple Cup on Fox Sports Northwest. Huskies lead it by 14, but the Cougars, who scored a touchdown with their last possession, will have it again here. Sarshar does a nice job to catch the floating snap and gets a pretty good bounce on the kick. Watch this one. He has to go up the ladder and does a pretty good job. When that first snap came out of there, I thought, oh, that might go over his head, but it was a soft lob back to him. Four wide receivers, black in the backfield, no tight end. Leap audibles on first and 10 from the Cougar 36. Protection is good, and McWashington the catch for a first down. That pass was caught by Sean McWashington, number 45, from Ryan Lee. Cougars buying Ryan a little bit of time. He's able to, again, drift off to the left, away from the defender. I think that was Wicks down. getting some pressure right up the middle. And he's able to throw a pretty accurate throw there. Had to slice it in between linebacker and corner and got it done. All of a sudden couple of numbers uh, they're not exactly what Ryan was expecting out of this game nowhere near to his uh, efficiency of last year's game but starting to move a little 620 left in the football game Huskies calling off the blitz Leaf pressured anyway almost got away from David Ritchie but he goes down 
and the Cougars will have to hustle now because that'll keep the clock moving. Shows you how big Ryan Leaf is. David Ritchie is no small man. Been able to grab him and throw him down, but still Ryan Leaf almost came out of this thing, Cleve. Well, David Ritchie goes with the swim technique right over the top. Ryan sees him. He tries to do a swim of his own. <laughs> the ball's flying around there, and he almost got away with him, but Ritchie's credited with the sack. Second down now, about 15 yards, five yards loss on that play. Look at the pressure this time. Leaf tries to get rid of the ball to Black, but the whistle was blown. I think they're going to call him for in the grasp. Ryan Leaf is uh, trying to appeal to the official for uh, offsides, but it looked like there that the, the Huskies knew the count and the Cougs didn't. Just absolutely missed him all the way, and there's the mistake. Ryan's begging for some help, but that's just a, a big error. Brian Chu just leaves him almost like they were run blocking. And yeah, it's, uh, it's a good thing the officials called him dead. Otherwise, it would have been grounding the ball and lost it down. Well, two plays now. It's uh, third and a whole bunch. Two sacks in a row. That's three on the day for the Dogs now. Third and 22 for the Cougars from the 34. Leaf steps up, throws it deep. T Taylor makes the catch, and it's a first down for the Cougars. Well, you can keep on knocking him down, but he's showing he'll get back up. Ryan Leaf throwing an excellent pass again. The, uh, the post-corner type of uh, route run by Taylor looked like Nigel Burton had that read perfectly and was going to break on it, lost his footing, and just gave it that extra little five tenths of an inch to get through there because he was in really pretty good position to knock that away. Nice catch this time by Taylor. The wide receiver starting to come through now. 4.50 to go in the game. The Cougars in a situation now where they almost need to call two plays in the huddle. Five wide receivers, nobody in the backfield. Leaf wants the quarterback draw it. And we got a flag thrown, that'll stop the clock. Gonna be a hold on the Cougs. Looks like the fellow we talked about earlier, Scott Sanderson holding Ink Aliaga. Strange call, eats up a lot of time. Well, he actually had it, uh, you know, as, as Aliaga is coming on the blitz, he's the middle linebacker. Viala and him are both coming and just was stuffed up in the middle that Ryan couldn't get through cleanly. Campbell was there. He's not going to sneak through any hole. No, he, <laughs> he, he's not someone that tiptoes around. Holding offense 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Still first down. So first and 22 now from the 47. There's Wiggs in the middle, and Aliaga is just kind of roped and tied and <laughs> set down there. That's a, a rodeo in Pullman. Yes. Well, Mike Price's team needs another big play here. They need to score quickly. Four and a half minutes to go in this game. They trail by two touchdowns. Leaf, pump fake, throws, has Carpenter, and that'll pick up about 14. And for Chad Carpenter, that's his 106th catch as a Cougar. Ties him with Ed Barker for the number 10 spot on the all-time receiving charts in Pullman. Usually you don't want to pump to the guy in the middle and then try and throw it after you've invited linebackers and a couple other monsters in there. But Chad's able to hold on to that football under less than ideal conditions. Cougars with the wind behind them. Out of the shotgun. Second and seven. Leaf steps up and has his man Tim's little running room. Cuts it outside. Foot race to the end zone. Touchdown, Washington State. Touchdown. Ryan Leaf. Deshaun Tim's 33 yard. Well, just when we were about to write this one off. You never can tell with a passing team. That's right. You got weapons like Sean Tim's who. Once he does get the football, has excellent speed and open field running capabilities. He's the punt returner. Watch this move right here. It just sets him down. Is Smith, who's the corner. Burton unable to come all the way across, so Cougars come through in a long yardage situation. Tony the Toe puts it through. 24-17. You're watching the Apple Cup on Fox Sports Northwest.
Well, the Cougars have certainly brought the crowd back into this football game by scoring two fourth quarter touchdowns. They trail by seven with 346 to go in the game. This first down play will be the key right here. Dillon. Not much doing there. Maybe a yard by the time it's all said and done. Also got to play with poise now, too. You can't get, get too mixed up in the extracurricular activities, but uh, that's the key play. As you see that sore right calf, Corey Dillon, he's not able to get any room to run inside. Cougars again. And Corey Dillon is going to have to come off. He's not able to perform at 100%. Holloman will come back into the ball game, or perhaps it's Harris. It's Mike Reed oh, in there. Mike Joe Reed, back. the big back. Sonny, who's the go-to receiver in this situation? you got to look for a guy, uh, Jarzinka, who's in there right now, number 21. Heward throws it up the sidelines. Boren Cola, the coverage on Coleman. It's incomplete. Good pass, good coverage. Coleman couldn't hang on. Beautiful defense that time by Moore and Cola. Exact same play they ran last time, the lob up the sideline, and he's able to jam his hand in between uh, Pathon's, uh, R. Coleman's arms, and knock that thing away. So that stops the clock. Exactly. And, Don't have to use the timeout. And that, that, you know, that's the disadvantage. You can see that hand going right between Coleman's hands. Brock Hewitt, pretty good throw, but again, stops the clock. Third and 11. Uh, tough play call here for the Huskies. See if well, the one guy that the Huskies are missing is Dave Janoski, who has been out for most of the ball game. Third and 13. Heward, play fake, wants to throw, throws it deep, and it is caught and dropped. Very strange. Perhaps the Huskies are thinking the offensive coaches what you guys were about burning the timeouts. Well, the, you know, that's that's a, maybe a play that's considered as good as a punt, that if it's intercepted or what have you, but Brock Hewitt delivered that ball right where it was. Regardless, that stops the clock. Hardly any time taken off in that whole series, and the Cougs should get the ball in pretty good field position. They look like they're going to come after Hamid Sarshar here. Now they don't. They set up the return. It's a short kick. Should Tim's fair catch. He'll cover the ball at the 41-yard line. Hold on to your seat. Nice 23-yard punt. <laughs> <laughs> well, you you know, you just can't expect much more. There is a pretty good breeze going here, and uh, whether it's 33, 43, the Cougs still would have the ball in pretty good field Very position. Very good field position. And Ryan Leaf uh, seemingly have uh, come back from the dead, bring this football team back. 231 left to go on the Husky 40-yard line. Ryan Leaf is hit on six consecutive passes. Nobody in the backfield. Five wide receivers for the Cougars. Here's the pressure. Gets it off. Carpenter the catch. He's got some running room. Carpenter a block from McWashington. He'll go out of bounds at the 22-yard line. Cougars have found something that works, and that is to run the delay route underneath the slot as he clears out the man-to-man -man coverage. Here you see Parrish's with Tim's and doesn't allow Miller to cover very closely on Chad Carpenter, and he's scooting up that same sidelines that Sean Tim's just did. And he stopped the clock, which was a great move by Chad. Carpenter, four catches into the top 10 Cougar career lists. First down at the 22 for the Cougars. Leaf, the short drop. Guns it out. Another catch. First down at the 13. No, it won't be. It'll be a nine-yard game. McWashington the catch. Boy, how many times do you see it when an offense is ahead 24 zip and you kind of go a little stale? And it's hard to get jump started again when you're when you're the other team's getting close. Whereas when you're on a roll like the Cougars are, it just stays hot. Absolutely. These two Washington teams and UCLA were the only Pac-10 teams not to play in overtime this year. UCLA beat USC in overtime today. We could be looking at some extra play here. All of a sudden, the Cougars moving the football. 2.18 to go, plenty of time. Cougars have two timeouts, as do the Huskies. Got to hurry. Leaf almost lost the ball on the snap. 
And that gain or play will go for no gain. And it'll keep the clock rolling, which really right now is, is not as big a factor as I had thought it might be when the Cougs got the ball back. Ryan Leaf has his offensive team on the line of scrimmage for a long time there, making a couple adjustments, and the snap just came up. Uh, Might have jammed a finger there as, uh, sometimes. Sonny, you remember how many times you catch that ball in the, right in the, the big finger? Two down territory for the Cougars on third and two. Let's see if Michael Black gets it. He does. Black bounces it, has the first down. He'll be near the 10 yard line. That'll stop the clock while they move the chains. Ryan Leaf needs to communicate with the sidelines now and uh, understand that he's got time to work with. He's got four new plays. Complete their plays at the start of the game, start of the half that are scripted. Are there red zone plays in a situation yeah. like this, or does the game situation change that? No, definitely there is a, a, a script or a, a, I guess, a menu of plays that you can look to uh, inside the 20-yard the line. Black tries to cut it back. Touchdown. Black! Touchdown, Washington State. The... You got a late hit. Jason Chorak on Brian Leaf that will be assessed on the kickoff. How do you like this one? Tony the Tro, the senior, will have to come on to tie this ball game. Huskies running in different personnel trying to block this. Biggest kick of this young man's Cougar career. We are tied with a minute 18 to go. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Great Huskies. comeback. Very unbelievable, but passing attack when it's hot it's hot husky scored the first 24 points in this game the cougars were left for dead they were roadkill and they've come back to tie it at 24. well let's see what happens on the kickoff here coming up and good nice. move by yeah. michael black great cutback he almost did it the play before able to stiff arm ink aliaga in the hole and then accelerate past uh, parish to the end zone just an incredible job by the offensive line as they've been able to protect Leaf and give a little hole for Michael Black to exploit. 15-yard penalty, do you go with the onside kick now? That's what I was thinking. Uh, I, I guess it doesn't really hurt you because uh, 118, I, my, my experience goes back to last year's decision as you see the absolute late hit and, and Chorick knew it the whole time. He's pointing to Ryan say he was gonna hit me. But uh, last year, Cougars were kind of in a similar situation where they had to kick off late in the game. They did the pooch kick, it didn't go very far, and then in fact was returned right. for about 20, 25 yards and set up the last minute uh, field goal by Wales last year. So I would expect that the Cougars will try to play for the tie, feeling that their offense is on a roll, and let's go ahead and go to this new tiebreaker. Look at this guy, <laughs> he's just getting warmed up, he says. Take off the shirt. <laughs> Let's get it on. Truant kicks it high and into the end zone, kind of tantalizing Reed, and Reed will have to set it down. So no time goes off the clock. A minute 18. Uh, you go ahead, take the shot that maybe you play for the field goal uh, what and, and use the timeouts. What I'm wondering, Sonny, do you set up some plays here that you try to get a feel for what the defense is doing to see what might work in the overtime session. Well, it's a whole different defense you're going to see here that you'll see in the red zone. So it, I don't think that would work so much. The one thing here is the Huskies can't afford to come out and throw three long passes incomplete and leave time on the clock. Cougars still have two timeouts as well. Cougars back uh, backing off more of a prevent kind of look than up and challenging. They've got starting unit in there. Reed lined up in an H-back position. Heward, the short drop, he's gonna run it himself. He's got a little running room and slides underneath Derek Henderson. First down, we'll stop the clock. Brock Heward looked fairly quick on that play, Cleet. Yeah, he uh, planted that foot and he was off to the races. 111, left in the game now. We saw Brock Heward, Huskies did, in the first game of the year against ASU, come back late. A couple big plays. You were the quick drop, the out, and has the catch. 
Fred Coleman at the 36. That'll stop the clock. Coops keeping everything in front of him, knowing that the wind is in the face of Wales and that it's got to be a dramatic play. They got to. They have to be real close. They'd have to do something, make a big error in order to let somebody get behind them. So if Brock wants to throw the five yard out a couple times, and they'll let him do that. You know, the wind is blowing strong enough that the coin flip, if we do go to overtime, could be pivotal. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> you laugh now. No, yes. I do. So. <laughs> it's true. Second and four for the 36 with 58 seconds left in regulation. Delayed handoff to Reed. He'll try to run out of bounds, and he will get close to the first down marker. Down to 51 seconds left. The spot is just shy of the first down marker. Wow, this game is just, I'm still just stunned. We were writing it off, begging for some offense, and uh, at least I was, Sonny, and I, <laughs> my prayers have come true here. We've got a tied up ball game, 51 third seconds one. left. Third and one for the dog. Now the first order of business, the Huskies need about a half yard here. Reed will be stood up, but he'll get enough for the first down. So that'll be enough that the Cougars will not see the football in regulation, unless the Huskies have a turnover, which you would not expect. Mike Price never doubted it for a minute. Knew he was in control the whole way. Just set him up, get well, that yeah. Corey Dillon guy off the field, and, uh, and then we'll charge back. Heward has time, throws it up the sidelines for Payton. He makes the catch. Out there of bounds at the 27. Coach Linehan must have been listening to me, Cleet. Yeah, he was because D. Morincola is up in a position where he's challenging Payton. Here he is. He's just locked up like he's been all game. Gives away the outside, just that extra step. And he doesn't turn his head in time to find the ball. That's a perfectly thrown ball. And boy, you, you just wonder why is he in that position? Why is he up challenging like that? Why not sit back and, well, it's all history, but it's history now. But 37 seconds left. Saying. Right now it's a 44 yard field goal attempt. Reed bowls his way for three yards. Every yard will be precious to John Wales now. And every position on the field also. Uh, this is well within his range though. Well, John has missed one this afternoon, but last year in Husky Stadium, 30-30 tie, he was able to come through and hit the big one for the winner. There you see, longest of his career, 49 yards, longest of the season, 42 yards. And Brock Heward wants a timeout. Well, this is a, a dangerous position from the standpoint of play calling. You never know what's gonna happen if there's a sack or you know, people get spun around and you lose that time. You almost have to go ahead and and kick the ball here because, you know, there's no timeouts eight, left. Yeah, eight seconds. You got to get out. You know, there's just no guarantee you're going to get another shot with just eight seconds. Even if you throw the five yard out, you never know what's going to happen. So well, you, you got to go with it. But you can see the flags on the goalposts are there is a stiff wind down there. Eight Mike seconds. Price, Jim Lambright, wondering if they're going to work a little overtime today. Now, you should be nice to Chuck. You might need a golf lesson once in a while, Cleet. I've seen your game. Uh, I need more than more than a golf lesson. <laughs> yeah. Take three lessons, then quit the game. Well, this is the fun part of college football right here, to see it come down in a big rivalry game like this and big comeback by the Cougars in the second half. Now watch the snap. This has been the key component for the Huskies. They've had a lot of trouble getting a decent snap back to Fortney, not only today, but in the last couple weeks. Gary Jensen does the snapping. Snap's good, spot's good, kick is on its way, plenty of distance. Yeah. He hooked it to the left. Oh, man. Three seconds left. We're probably headed to overtime. Boy, he had the leg, he had the distance. Might be attributed a little bit to the wind blowing down there on the field. Absolutely. It is, it is in your face, and soccer-style kickers are going to hook it a little bit. And so 
Looks like we've got us three seconds left before overtime. Here you see, looks like it starts out there, but the, the wind catches that ball and just, <laughs> not much. Not by much. Not by much, pretty good stroke. He just, thought he had it. He thought pretty he had good it. kick by John, but uh, speaking of the golf game, once the wind gets a hold of it, it's gonna push it. Denied, and Coach Lambeau's gonna watch this one, and he cannot believe it. Mike Price, <laughs> disbelief, disbelief. Oh, we won't get it as Ryan Leaf just downs it. And ladies and gentlemen, we've got overtime. And the Cougs are fired up. Welcome back, literally, to Martin Stadium. These guys left a long time ago. Hey, we got a football game. Here they come. Huskies first and 10 at the 25. Jarzinka in motion. Heward will throw on first down. Little screen to Mike Reed. Reed is going to have a first down and be dragged down at the 70. Fumbled the ball, but it was after the play was dead. Down to the nine-yard line. Pretty good job by Mike Reed to get as much yardage as he did off that play. Well, a quick gain of 16. Well set up, well executed that time. The tight end screen had been sniffed out, but this time they leaked the tail back out, pitching the ball. Another guy that's not in the ball game is uh, Cam Cleland, 85, the regular tight end. First and goal now for Brock Hewitt and the Huskies. This is where they might miss Corey Dillon. Let's see what Mike Reed can do. Cougars jump offside. There's a flag. Free play for the Huskies. Reed brought down no gain. The Huskies move, but I think it was after the Cougar contact. Leon again is guilty. It's hard, it's, mad, it's hard to believe he can do that on a bad ankle. <laughs> well, he just right, lined up right on top of that football, and, and he's must have extra sensitive ears because when those quarterbacks. Outside, defense, half the distance to well, the you got to be all fired up during a Still first down. overtime play. No, That'd be exciting, wouldn't it, Cleet? I think to be down there and... Oh, it'd be an absolute blast. It's a great concept. I really like it. Huskies now inside the five. They've got four downs to sneak it across. Got to like the Washington position right now. Again, no matter what happens here, the Cougars will have the football for their turn. Cougars blitzing. They give it to Reed, and Reed breaks a couple of tackles and gets close to the goal line. About six inches away, it looks like. Boy, you've got good eyes. Well, you know, it looked like from the beginning there that Mr. Moore, number 22, was going to get back there and get him behind the line of scrimmage. It was a good job by... He does get him. He, he actually Mike is Reed. just a little bit late on that time. He just barely got picked off. There you see that uh, James Darling is able to stop Reed just short of the goal line. About a half a yard for the Huskies to get into the end zone here in the overtime. Heward was trying to get into the end zone the way Ryan Leaf does, and it backfires. Nah, that was a broken play for sure. Terrible, terrible circumstance. Brock Heward, it looked like he turned the wrong way. Everybody else is set up to go to the right side, and he opens up to the left, and, and I got to believe that's on Brock Heward. It sure appeared that way. Look, at he's just going to turn around and look for the back, and, and he's not even anyone near him. And it looked like the hole was being created off the right side. Loss of two, back to the three now. Do you got to throw it? We got to remember also that, you know, Brock Hewitt, first overtime game, is just a redshirt freshman quarterback. Strange things happen near the goal line. Yep, Jarzinka in at the slot, might go in motion. Yep, try to get him the ball in the, on the flat. Hewitt into the end zone for Payton, makes the catch. Touchdown Huskies. Beautiful throw and catch from Brock Hewitt to Jerome Payton. D. Moore and Cola had the coverage. Much like that long pass play complete in the fourth period, Jerome Payton able to go up over Marincola and make the grab. Nope, just he has better position because he's looking back at the quarterback and 
make an adjust to the ball. And that's just very good coverage all the way that time by D. Just a better play by Payton. Well, they need a good snap here. John Wales with two missed field goals. Low snap, but he gets it through. So the Huskies <laughs> convert. I tell you, the Husky kicking game is just an adventure every time. <laughs> well, I think the big play, that 16-yard first down play, the pass from Brock Ewart to Mike Reed, the getting the Huskies play. off early. So uh, here's the touchdown throw. Brock Ewart just going to open up to his good side, plant and lob it out there and let his athlete go over the top. You can see that's just a great catch. Very much so. I mean, Jerome Payton, the, the agility drills that the Huskies go through, he is one of the, he's the top guy in all their agility drills, and to go with his good speed, good concentration to hang on to the football. You know, it's, it's uh, maybe 30 degrees out here, and just to have the ability to hold on to that football, mindless of having somebody's fist in your face is a great athletic achievement. Four wideouts, black in the backfield for Washington State. They go now from the 25 with a full complement of downs. Huskies look very confused as far as line that Jensen, Aliaga, they're all talking to each other. Leaf going up already for Carpenter. Can't hang on. Well, there was a battle. Ryan Leaf going right up for it all. The whole enchilada the first Ooh, play. I think he audible to that, didn't he? I, uh, you know, I'm not sure that the Huskies were bouncing around so much, but this ball is is thrown pretty well, and looked like Smith just able to get a piece of that and jog it loose. Carpenter also just got it. Very close. Just got it, and he almost actually caught the rebound. Now the Cougars go to that five wide out set that the Huskies had some problems with earlier. Huskies don't have the right personnel to combat this they got to get pressure because they got Aliaga covering a wide receiver there's the quick toss McKenzie the catch breaks a tackle he's got a first down and he'll go out of bounds at about the eight Big Brian Chu gets up injured a bit but he's going to be able to keep going well that little underneath delay route been so effective in this later stages of this football game again Aliaga is the guy that's lined up over McKenzie, and he's just, you know, he's not a defender uh, from a standpoint of one-on-one -on -one with a slot back. <laughs> that's uh, that's going to be won by the slot back most times. Most of the times. Aliaga is a heck of an athlete, but he's just not used to it. He doesn't go through the drills. Comes down to execution here now. First and goal for the Cougars. Ball resting just inside the eight-yard line. Michael Black scored from this spot earlier. Let's see if the Cougars will go to the run. They will. Black trying to bounce it outside. Has Sanderson leading the way. Holding. As Black is hit at the one, we got a flag thrown back at the 11. And it's probably going to be a flag on the Cougs. Looks like McIndoo is going to be called for holding. Put on a pretty punishing block. Boy, that could be huge in this situation. Put him back on the 18-yard line. Actually, it's from the point of infraction, so it'd be just beyond the 20-yard line. It will still be first down, but as Sonny says, it should be back to the 21. And the Cougars will come back, it looks like, with that five wideout set. Holding offense. 10 yards to the spot of the foul. Still first down. You know, there's uh, that's the, you can see it right here, Cleet. Yeah, he, he gets a hold of Burton, and you can see that uh, he's got that backhand. You know, that's tough, but... Uh, officials right there and he's going to make the judgment call this time the Huskies with a little better personnel as they make some changes as the Cougars go to the five wideouts here comes the pressure Leaf gets it to McKenzie drop the ball is it going to be a completion I think no, so now they rule it off. off took a while for the officials to make a call they've been a little slow today on some of those calls coming from the sidelines almost a great grab Ryan Leaf is reading the inside linebackers. If they come, he's dumping it to that area that they vacate. 
McKenzie did a pretty good job of getting in inside position, but wasn't able to hold on to that football. Might have been thinking touchdown before he had the ball wrapped up. See Jerry Jensen coming off the field for the Huskies, sprained an ankle earlier in the ball game. Kyle Roberts in now, and a little confusion by the dogs. Cougars have three plays to pick up 21 yards to keep the game alive. Leaf being pressured, steps up. He's sacked by Campbell. So it's third down for the Cougars now from the 23-yard line. Ryan's hobbling a little bit as uh, Campbell might have come down on his right ankle that's been a little bit sore. Ryan trying to find somebody open is focused on the top of his screen. Campbell slips off the inside of Sanderson and chases him down. Good coverage in the secondary. You know, from the formation, the way it was set, I thought on the near side there was more confusion and coverage by the Huskies. But Ryan looked strong side, as you say. Five, five. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, sorry. No, five lights. We're all again. just getting excited up here, that's all. Cougars, third and goal from the 23. Huskies have already scored in overtime. Leaf steps up, steps up, throws into the end zone from McWashington, can't make the catch, it comes down to one play. Boy, those guys are tired out there. I'm telling you, you look at both sides of the line of scrimmage and they're just really huffing and puffing. Well, it's got to get in the end zone. And looked like Ryan had a shot there to, to take some more time and wait for something to open up. But it's awful easy up here to <laughs> yeah, it's easy for us. sit around and say, well, why <laughs> don't you just sit back in your, in your uh, lounge chair and, and throw it. But looked like he might have hurried that one a little bit, trying to make the spectacular throw across his body. Cougars bring Michael Black and David Knuff back in the game. I'd have seven DBs stationed at the five yard line. <laughs> All the marbles. Leaf has some time, here comes the pressure for Carpenter. Out of bounds. Didn't get the foot down, the Huskies win it. Whoa, what a finish, boys. He was there too, Cleet. Oh, no. He ran a great route. Had a shot to get that ball in there, and it was just a little bit outside of the sideline, and the Huskies will escape Boy, that's with an overtime <laughs> win. What a great fourth quarter for the Cougars. Mike Price coming over to shake hands. Great ball game, great comeback effort by the Cougs. Unfortunately for us, a little on the short side. Mike Price, Jim Lambright with the handshake. The Huskies survive in the Palouse in overtime, 31 to 24. You've been watching the Apple Cup on Fox Sports Northwest. In overtime, the Washington Huskies 31 to 24 over the Washington State Cougars. The Apple Cup finds yet another way to be exciting. Heck of a ball game for the second year in a row in Sunny Six Killer. Second year in a row, the Huskies with a close win. Yeah, I tell you, last year I thought was a real exciting ball game, but you can't beat today's ball game. I'll guarantee you that. <laughs> Set up by the great play by uh, the Huskies uh, throwing a screen pass to Mike Reed, get him down inside the 10. And a great catch by Jerome Payton, who has really done it, guys, the whole season. Again, for the big score to get the overtime victory. Our Magnolia moment, Brock Heward to Jerome Payton for the touchdown in overtime that gives the Huskies the 31-24 victory over Washington State. A beautiful throw and catch by the Dogs to grab the lead. And the Cougars were unable to get a touchdown on their offensive possession in the overtime. The Huskies get the victory. And Cleet Casper, our player of the game, Corey Dillon. He was amazing when he was in there. A cramp knocks him out of this one, and the Cougars get a chance to come back because of that. Well, obviously, you got to give him credit, although in this last quarter, he was non-existent because of the cramp. But outstanding year for him. Congratulations to, to Corey, uh, the player of the game, and uh, best of luck to the Huskies as they go on to their postseason ball game. Wherever going to the be. sunshine, huh? <laughs> it's going to be well, depends. You never know. they got representatives here from the Holiday Bowl, and uh, certainly for the Husky fans, that'd be great. Sonny and Cleet, thank you guys very much. A lot of fun again. Want to 
thank all of our folks here at Fox Sports Northwest as we made the transition from Prime Sports Northwest this year. Our producer director, Brian Murray, and the rest of the gang. Another exciting Apple Cup, and we'll see you again next year with Cougar and Husky football on Fox Sports Northwest. Thank you.